Five. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Let's uh. Look, the the cool kids on Twitch have been here for a little bit ahead while I've been setting things up, but now we're here with everybody. Hopefully, Let's see if my overlay is going to work today. If it's not, it's not a big deal. Uh, we'll keep on keeping on. We've got a backup scene we can use instead. Because there's a chance it'll, it'll probably work a little bit to begin with and then probably like fall over. Um, so far, yeah, we've got like a little bit of like old YouTube chat in there. So that's good. So it's found the broadcast and everything. That's nice. We're done waiting on YouTube. <laughs> well, I mean, we're, 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 we're both places now, so that's cool. Uh, oh, my privacy is unlisted on YouTube, though. That's, you know, we need to change that. So it's really only the people who are, like, directly, like, just lurking who can even see this right now. So let's go publico. That's a shame, because that probably, yeah. Probably should have had it public the whole time. I don't know how that works, notifications and stuff. We learn. We, we live and learn. It's okay. But now we get, yeah, we get this little bit of interaction between between the streams, which I always think is cool. Let's just turn this down a little bit. And I don't know how, it, let me know Let me know what audio is like. I think it's always tricky to like work that stuff out. Um, in fact, I might just loop this back around to the start. A bit more chill. And then whatever that was that we got up to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the, that's the hope. So what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to use the new beta to try and see what it is like to try and make a multiplayer game with this brand new stuff. It's not good, like, it'll be somewhat limited out of the gate. We can expect that much, but we're going to see, like, they've, they've made kind of a big deal about how, like, easy it seems to be to, like, make a multiplayer game and share it. So we're kind of going to be giving that a go. Um, and trying that out. I don't know that we'll necessarily use all of the easiest stuff because I think like I did watch a little bit of this and it seems like you know yeah you can do it really really quickly if you use some somewhat maybe limited kind of setup of it. Um, but I don't know I don't really have all the context yet so I, I don't really know how it's gonna go. I don't know what what we're gonna end up with if it's gonna be easy if it's gonna be really hard or really complicated if it's gonna be really buggy um, what elements of that we think are maybe going to be core to the system itself and what elements we think may, might improve over time just because it's like early in its beta. We'll just kind of like try and, you know, um, gather some thoughts on it, I suppose. It's very exciting, very cool. Um, the idea of being able to create like and share like multiplayer things. Um, is, is is very, 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 very cool. Even, like, it is a bummer that it's, like, only on GX Games, and I just want to get in early, and I'll say this a few times throughout the stream, and correct myself. Um, when I made my video about this, I said that you can only make HTML5 games for GX Games, because that's what I assumed GX Games was. Uh, GX Games does not use HTML5. I don't recall what it's actually called now, um, it's something else, uh, it, but it's some other infrastructure that runs the game through the browser that is not that is not driven by HTML. So it's uh, it's not the same thing as that. Um, it's kind of an important correction. I'm told it's actually like a bit better or more flexible than that. I'm literally going off a single YouTube comment with this information. Like I, I'm not well informed on this, like at all. You know, like I really don't know more than what's been in this post and like. My ADHD brain has not read every single word in this post either. It's it's red highlights and things, you know. I, uh... <laughs> so like, there's there's probably plenty I'm missing. So if you know some, if if you've been looking into this a lot and you maybe think I'm missing something or like you know or or I'm getting something wrong, do feel free to like you know pipe up. Um, we're, we're all here to learn about this together today, and see like you know what what what's the deal with this tech? Like can like how. 
How easy is it to make a more player game? Um, how does this stuff work? And maybe we can pointlessly speculate about what it's going to be like in the future. How do I know it works if uh, once I'm done? Well, hopefully you guys will be able to help with that a little bit. It's a multiplayer game we're making today. That we can locally test it. So like I'll be able to do that, obviously. I'll be able to locally test it. Um, and the local testing actually runs through the servers from what I gathered. Just from I've watched just like a little bit of this video. Um, so that like even when you're locally testing, um, it's actually sending the data to the, the servers and back anyway. So it, it, it's functioning the same as it would like playing it like um, live. Um, so that's cool. But then hopefully by the end of what we do here, we'll be able to put this on the GX Games thing, share it, you know, we'll be able to just like play it. I don't know what it's... My idea is I kind of want to make like a little hide and seek game. I, don't, I haven't really thought, I haven't planned it out as much as I would have liked to, you know, I haven't like written a doc or anything like that. We're just kind of going to get in there, start building, see what we can do, hopefully make something with some kind of like fun game loop that's kind of interesting. And, and go from there. If like it is super easy and we get it like done and I don't know, I, I, I get bored of the game idea that we're working on. The other thing that I might do is, uh, I don't know if anyone remembers a game I made called Fireball. Um, I might make this game, I would love to make this multiplayer because it's actually very well suited, right? Um, so there's just a few players doing a shooty thing and you're just trying to like, you know, it's, it's spleef from my, Minecraft, right? You're trying to like knock dirt out from under one another and like make each other fall. Seems like it would be well suited from what I've seen that this, this is capable of, right? Um, so that's kind of like the, the, I don't know, maybe over ambitious stretch goal of the day is like, see what it's like to port this. I might do that. I don't know about stream or whatever, but I might, I'm might. probably going to do this one way or another regardless, but it's like something we might do today. Uh, if we get there. Do we need sockets knowledge? Apparently not. Like, this is the thing. Like, apparently we don't really need much knowledge of, like, anything. So what I'm going to do to start, is I'm going to pause my music for a second, and we're going to watch this video. Um, I might have to take some notes. Uh, we'll see. I'm not, I don't know. I never... Who am I kidding? I never take notes on anything. We're just going to watch it, and if we forget anything, we'll rewatch it. But <laughs> we're going to watch this video. Uh, Gopreet, um, the, 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 the tech writer, uh, made for how to make a multiplayer game. It's like under 15 minutes. So we're going we're gonna to see what it's like. I've seen bits of this already. I couldn't help myself. I wanted to go in as blind as I could, but I couldn't help myself just watching this a little. Um, and, and we'll see how it is. So... Uh, also, like, oh, I really don't want to jinx it, but, like, I'm kind of happy that the overlay seems to be holding up so far. If it doesn't, we've got a backup, so we'll try not to worry too much. Um, anyway, I'm going to turn this right up. Let me know what the audio is like, if it's way too loud or whatever, but I kind of want you guys to be able to hear it, so, like, let me know what this is like. Just, like, say in chat, like, like now-ish, rather. Making your own multiplayer game here. used to be a long and complicated process. But with Game Maker's new built-in multiplayer yes, for no. GX games, it's the easiest it's ever been. Today we'll be creating this quick online action game, which you can then upload to GX games. You guys are useless. Can you echo? There's an echo. Oh, it's echoing through my mic. That makes sense. Okay. Um. Yeah, because obviously my NVIDIA broadcast will cancel out other sound. It's not canceling out the sound from this. That makes a lot of sense. So what I'm going to... Do I meet myself while I? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I could actually. Yeah, I'm gonna put my headphones on. So that a uh, quick solution to that problem. Uh, headset. And play it together with your friends. Making okay. your own multiplayer game used to be a long and complicated process. But with Game Maker's new built-in multiplayer for GX games, it's the easiest it's ever been. Today we'll be creating this quick online action game, which you can then upload to GX games and play together with your friends. Currently, you need the beta version of Game Maker to use multiplayer, so download that from the link in the description. Just noticing something real quick. Do we have a bit of delay on YouTube? I'm just gonna check real quick. Normal latency. Ah, can I not change that now? 
So I'm just noticing like people in the, uh, the YouTube chat are just like a little bit behind. It doesn't. It's fine. Otherwise, you're probably just going to be about thirty seconds behind. That's that's. We'll live with that. That's a shame, but um, we'll just carry on. After installing it, create a new black project, give it a name, and then hit Let's Go. I have an asset package here that I'll drag into GameMaker, which so, contains the sprites for. So I'm guessing the stuff at the start. I, I think I've seen this a couple of times. We're just sort of bringing in some sprites and stuff here. So I'm probably just going to skip ahead. Some of this is just like making a project. We're setting up a room size, all this kind of stuff, right? Like there's a proper like it's proper aim to beginners. Like you can. From what I can tell, you can kind of follow a lot of this if you've never even made anything before. I don't know if that was the right direction just because, you know, you're going to get into code and stuff and that's just going to... Uh, I, I don't know. But, like, it does kind of cover everything, you know? The, it, it does seem to be, like, start to finish, follow all these steps, you end up with a multiplayer game. Like, you know, it doesn't really, like, assume anything, which is really cool. Um, but we're going to skip ahead of the project stuff because I think we all kind of know that stuff. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll get straight into a multiplayer setup because we've got some chapters in here. So okay, so now that the boring part is done, let's start programming our game. Open OBJ game in the events window. Add the create events. If you're asked, select GML code. Now in the events, let's call a few functions. If you're asked, first of all, tell Game Maker which object you're going to use for your players which in our case is obj player then in a condition try to join a game the so, so this is interesting as well yeah I'm, i don't want to I'm pause to you which but like it's interesting is like we define a player um and then like so we give each player kind of an object and that's actually like most of what a player gets it seems um I don't know if there's like a general like step event or whatever that you can use. It seems like there's events that are tied to this from a quick glance at the documentation. We'll learn more about that. But I did worry when I saw this, it's just like, oh, you just define one object or whatever that like that seemed limited to me of like, well, this is where all the players go. But oh, we'll see. This will only work if you were invited. If you weren't invited, then this function will return false, which is what we are checking for here. In that case, create a new game. It will take two players. The maximum for this right now is four. So there's a big thing, right? Right. Um, big limit that wasn't really mentioned in like the, the the blog post that I could tell. Maybe I missed it. it it's probably there, but like it, it wasn't obvious right away. This only goes up to four players, right? At the moment, um, it, I think he said like just at the moment. Players. The maximum for this right now is four. Yeah, maximum for this right now is four. I think I feel like the right now is important, but I I, I don't know. The, the, there's not really been I've not really seen a lot of discussion of the player cap, so I don't really know much about like whether or not soon that's gonna increase or whether or not they're gonna run with that for a while. Um, who knows? Then the second argument is true, which enables offline testing. Now run the game. And in the top left corner, you'll see a player. That's where GameMaker creates your players by default. So when you define these and you start a game, it makes whatever object you defined. When you define this, when you when you, you join or when the game starts or whatever, when it gets the requisite number of players, um, it makes one of this object, whatever you defined here, for every player. This really is kind of like the sim. I, I, from what I gather, like the the simple mode of this, and I think there are like more manual things you can do. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it works. Uh, I can't remember the feel has been thrown on us. Have something so complex exists as standard. Um, you know, what? I I well, I think the way it means rollback. Uh, we'll get into that later, but like. No, I, I think it's pretty justified in calling it rollback, but we'll we'll, we'll get to that. Um, this isn't a new. This is a, this is in the beta at the moment. It's like a new feature that's coming to Game Maker. Um, yeah. Create a new game. It will take two players. The maximum for this right now is four. Then the second argument is true, which enables offline testing. And yeah, you can certainly now do a lot with the game, yeah, an object. And in the top left corner, you'll see a player. 
that's where game maker creates your players by default let's place them out separately now open the obj player object and here add the create event first of all set the y or vertical position to half the room's height so it's centered vertically and then check if the player's id is zero which is the first player if it is then we set the x position or the horizontal position to 50. but if the player's id is one which is the second player then we set its x position to room width minus 50 so that's on the right side of the room run the game and both players will now be in separate places now let's get them to move before we do that though you can see so that was kind of interesting right so in the players create event like so we, we just know that this variable is going to get going to exist because it's just going to come as part of like when we define the object and then so whenever the object is like the player object is doing anything it can like check this value to see which player it is that has it i was what i was wondering when i was reading this because i was thinking about the kind of game i want to make i was like i want to have the camera follow like your player like how on earth do i do that i think i've kind of worked out that you can do that but i was really confused just by the base of how every object is itself like that object is running on you know in every version of the game and it doesn't matter which like player id it is like eventually one of them is going to do the thing like how do i make how do i reference the player how do i know which player is running this version of the game you know like with you if you've got four players playing a game they're all they've all got their own client going how do i know which client is going right now in order to say which camera the player should be following i don't really get how to do that um but i think reading the documentation i have a better idea because there's some events and stuff it's tied into but we'll see how it, how it gets on to game appears um, a bit blurry at places okay. now let's get them to move before we do that though you can see the game appears a bit blurry to fix this, go into Game Options, open Opera GX. Yeah, how, how do you think I learn anything simply for Disable the Interpolate Colors option. Good step. <laughs> the first step to moving the player is reading input. And the way you read input works differently in multiplayer. So let's go into OBJ Player and add the step event. Here we are going to call Rollback Get Input, which gives you the input struct for a player. Let's store that in a local variable. Then in a condition, let's check if input dot left is true, which means the left arrow key is being held down. In that case, we move the player to the left by reducing its x value. Similarly, let's check for the right also key just input, posting to Twitter, then right? the up key, and then the down key. Because I, I have seen like this first bit of the video. Um, input rollback, yeah. So this was interesting. So just like each one gets his own. I was really worried here when I saw this because it was just like, oh, what? They just have like fixed keys. Um, like how? So how would I do like mouse input? Like I just had a million questions and concerns when I started to just see like, oh, it's just a basic thing that just gets input, and you just have a simple struct of like keys. Um, but you can define this yourself. You can actually like define. Uh, you can like define the input and then and, and and so on. There is a lot more you can do left right up and down are some default inputs and they're assigned to the arrow keys run the game and you can now move around with the arrow keys the second player is just moving randomly and that's because we enabled offline testing no and that enables wow. the other players always receive random in might actually need to take this which is unfortunate hello Never mind, it was just a scam call. <laughs> God damn it. I thought it might have actually been something important. It was not. Input every frame as a basic form of testing. Now, before we continue developing this game further, let's take it online. You'll also be able to invite your friends and play with them. First of all, in OBJ Games Create Events, you need to. So that's kind of, yeah, this like just random input thing is kind of interesting. I wonder if that'll just become more of a problem than a thing, but I think you can turn it off as well from what I've seen. If we continue developing this game further, let's take it online. So it's not lag. Uh, that's actually randomized input. Um, You'll also be able like, because that's player two, 
And so, like, he's testing it locally. Um, so, uh, like, he's controlling this character, and this character is just giving me, like, random input. First of all, in OBJ games, create event, you need to disable offline testing. So just set the second argument here to false. Then up here, select the Opera GX target if you haven't already. Now before running the game, go to the GX Games website and make sure you are logged in. I'll this need to do this. I don't even know if I have a profile or anything. Then back in Game Maker, run the game. It should open up in Opera GX. Once the game starts up, yeah, that was it, Richard. Down and you'll find the copy share URL button. <laughs> Click on it, and that will copy a link oh, that happens that every week. player can use to join your game. At the moment, we are testing locally, so your friends can't join yet. So open a new tab and paste the link here, drag it out into its own window and just lay them out so you can see both at the same time. They will connect and you will be able to play your game for now with yourself. These are connected through actual servers so even though you're testing locally, both of these games are connected through the internet. This means that at this stage, your game already has functional online multiplayer. Does actually look kind of laggy here, but I don't know if more of that's more how he's like coded the characters. Now, how do you upload this game and play it with your friends? Because the way rollback works, we were, you know, someone was asking like, how do you call this, like necessarily call it rollback or whatever. Um, the way rollback works, I mean, I only have a limited understanding, but it like, it, it tries to predict like game state to kind of avoid lag and every now and again it'll like realize that it got it wrong and then we'll just roll back to like a correct state. I've never liked it, I'm not gonna lie. Like it was a really popular thing in the fighting games for a really long time. Um, and I think it still is like the, the dominant netcode for some like older games and stuff. And honestly, like I've never like, it does create like you do feel like more like you're playing offline because of um, like it it feels more and you don't feel that slow down and that's what people are trying to avoid with with rollback but the 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 random jitters the, the, you still get the effects of lag you know it doesn't remove lag it just sort of like swaps one negative effect for another and the negative effect of rollback for me feels way more jarring usually when I play like an online game than than slow down. Slow down, I understand it makes sense. Uh, things happen slower and it's annoying, sure, but like it is what it is. Whereas like especially in fighting games when like the state of the game just completely changes because the game thought you were good, like the character was jumping in and then they were actually doing something else and it like warps back in time like ten frames or whatever. Like that always threw me off. So like I'm I'm a little like I have skepticism, but we'll, we'll see. Game Maker, click on Create Executable, and then log in through Opera. Once you've done that and the game is compiled and uploaded, click on Edit Game on Opera. This will open Dev Cloud, where you may need to log in again. Once you're on the game's details page, so this will be useful. I'll, I'll have to come back to this. Player. Select the number of players your game allows. Ours has to, then hit save and confirm. Now open the publishing menu, enable the private version, and then click. Skip this for now inputs, though. We'll, we'll come back to all that. It's just like, yeah, publish it on the store. Which will Whatever. include mouse inputs for a store GX, you know what I mean. Before doing that, I'll enable offline testing again. Then before a game is joined or created, let's call this function to define our own inputs. We'll specify a struct in the arguments, and in this struct, we'll list all of our inputs. Oh, okay, I didn't notice this. You actually, like, put a struct in it. Like, it takes a struct as input that's, like, key associated with key. Um, I guess, like, like how... You can't, like, assign multiple buttons to one thing here, or I suppose you could have left and left alternate or whatever, right? First, we have to redefine the same left, right, up, and down inputs that we are already using. And then we'll define new MBX and MBY inputs, which are the coordinates of the mouse cursor. Yeah, I wasn't sure about this first, but it's axis. I was just like, is it just returning the movement of the mouse or what? But apparently it is the coordinates. And then finally, we define fire, which is the left mouse button. Now you can use the ORD functions to use letter keys for some inputs. So I'll use the WASD keys for movement. 
You can even assign multiple inputs by using an array. Now for aiming, go into the player and open the step event. At the end, set the image angle which rotates the sprites and set it to the direction from the player towards the mouse cursor. In game, your player will now look at the mouse. Now spawning projectiles should be simple because we already have an object for it and a fire input that we just created. So in the player's step event at the end, let's check if the fire input was pressed. Instead of using just fire, I'll use fire underscore pressed which will check if the button was just pressed in the current frame instead of being held down. Hang on, the so did... Instead of we already having go in ORD functions. So it just has fire and then... The other keys for some inputs. So I'll use the WAF by using open the... Oh wait, hang on. For aiming array. Oh, you can pass an array? Sorry, I need to pay attention to this. I was like, okay, I understand this, and sort of stopped paying a lot of attention. I need to. W A S D keys for movement. You can even assign multiple inputs by using an array. All right. Now for aiming, go into the player. That's and a concern. Step event. At the end, set the image angle which rotates the sprites, and set it to the direction from the player towards the mouse cursor. In game, your player will now look at the mouse. Now spawning projectiles should be simple because we already have an object for it and a fire input that we just created. So in the player's step event at the end, let's check if the fire input was pressed. Instead of using just fire, I'll use fire underscore pressed. So that just gets added on, like if to the, the struct member, like that's... Which will check if the button was just pressed in the current frame instead of being held down. Because we didn't define like fire pressed or anything. So we just defined fire. So that means you can just stick underscore pressed on the end of like one of your inputs in the struct or something to get back that. Or, uh, I, I, I mean, is the same true for released? In that case, create a new instance of the projectile object, store that instance's ID in a local variable, then through that variable, set the speed of the projectile. Yeah, yeah, Mathru is the technical writer for, for Game Maker now. You know, like, it makes sense. Like, I mean, the style of his videos and stuff, I've taken inspiration from some of the style of like, his like, uh, videos. I've, I've always thought they were really good. Um, and uh, now, yeah, he works for Yo-Yo Games, um, does, like, basically their, like, official tutorials, um, and, like, writes their documentation. Um, I still think they probably could use more than one guy doing the documentation, but uh, um, he's been doing a really good job. Um, and, like, uh, the, the content has been coming out with to explain, like, simple new features and stuff, like, not simple... This isn't simple at all. <laughs> to explain features and stuff as they come out has been super, super good. It, it kind of, like, yeah, it's interesting because I came in as a community manager. Also, it was hoped I would do tutorials, but like the communities, like those weren't as compatible as like being the technical writer and doing the tutorials, right? Being the technical writer and doing the documentation, you have got to understand the features and explain them. Same is true for making videos about them. There's much, much better fit for like, you know, like trying to do both of those kind of things. Than, than what they brought me in to like do like I it was I couldn't really like they brought me in to do two very different jobs it didn't really work um, whereas this makes so much more sense. Then set its direction which is where it moves and this is the image angle of the player. Then also set the image angle of the projectile and then set a new variable called player. This will store the self of the current player to later tell us which player created a projectile. Oh right, yeah, this is just game logic so stuff. Game, so this is whatever. Let's program what happens. Check if the player exit the if the player a the other instance. Well, we're, what we're looking for here really is multiplayer specific stuff, right? I know how to make a game, right? So is there anything else? I don't know if there's any. I mean, this is all scoring. We just yeah we got the we've got the player number from the object or whatever there, spawning obstacles. It's just stuff, right? 
Okay, we're getting something with the rollback code here. What's going to happen? And here, set alarm zero to run after. Okay, that's just that. Oh, what's this? I'm curious about what causes this, because this might have been set up to teach us something. Testing, so it's now online and run the game. Your obstacles will start spawning immediately, and you will soon get an error saying that you can't create managed objects before a game starts. Uh, what was it like when we do it? It was mixed, um, but for circumstances that were not necessarily within their control. They're a really great team. Uh, the, yeah, my, my overall experience was mixed, but like the, the, the team are great. That's right, because the game hasn't started yet. All the players hammered jump. A managed object during draw or destroy event and before the rollback start event. I see. So this went off before like people had joined the game. And right, I, I remember reading something about this. You can flag objects as managed and they're the things that are actually controlled by rollback or whatever. Giant. So we need to make sure that the alarm only starts when the game has started. Things that are actually we synchronized. Do that in the rollback start event, which is found under other. So add that event and this is important. event, remove this line and put it inside the new rollback start event. And this will run when all the players have joined, and that's when the obstacles will also start spawning. In game. You also, from what I briefly looked, when you get that event goes off, you return. Like, it has access to a struct of some data, I'm pretty sure. Like, uh, rollback events, yeah. So you get this. You get a struct called rollback event param, which contains some values. You've got the number of players, the player ID of your local player. This was the important thing that I was looking for, right? I was like, how do I set a camera or something to follow one player? How do I, do, how do I know who the local player currently is? Um, and we get it here. Um, and once we get that, we can get that at the start, we can put it in a global or whatever, and then just like r rock that for like the whole game, right? Um, then uh, we don't, uh, we can do so much with just having that, but there's all this other stuff I haven't even I haven't looked at yet. This will now work fine without any errors. So you must keep in mind that any objects that are part of your game loop shouldn't be created or modified before the game starts. You can either use this rollback start event for that, or use the rollback game running variable, which returns true when the game has started. If you still want to create an instance before the game starts without getting any errors, you can disable the managed option for it, but then you need to make sure that such an object doesn't affect your gameplay at all. So you can use non-managed objects for creating be objects that don't affect your game. I'm guessing. Now share your first multiplayer game with your friends and play it together. I recommend creating more small projects like this, which will be fun and you'll also learn a lot from it. Read the manual to discover- <laughs> What's so funny is like when he talks about like the game is getting more and more fun the more we add to it, but he has the play. <laughs> it's got his like stone cold face on. <laughs> <laughs> I love Math 3's videos, they're great. <laughs> For all that you can do with multiplayer, it's linked in the description, and I'll see you in the next video. Sick. Yeah, that's cool. So, now we're going to try and use that, right? Um, what I would like to try and do, let's get my music going again. We're going to be probably referring back to this video a few times, but I expect maybe more to the documentation. Um, as we're going to try and make something based on what we've just seen. I want to try and make a little hide and seek game. So I, I don't really know entirely what that is 100% going to mean, but I'm going to, we've got four players and we're going to have one of them become like a bad guy and three guys trying to like escape. We'll, we'll kind of like I guess leverage the, the like the dead by daylight game loop a little bit maybe like you have to go and activate some things and open a door and get out kind of thing uh, and kind of like a round based sort of sort of game like that um I thought that would be like an okay place to start because it might like test some of the limits because like we want to do things that are a bit more complicated than that we're going to have like a camera follow the player around and some stuff um 
but also be kind of simple, like that we can make, we can get you guys to play it. I wanted, I was hoping there'd be more players. I, I, I was bummed out a little bit by the, the four player limit. Um, but we can work with that, you know? Like, I think one bad guy and three players, I think that's that's kind of okay. Um, we, we, we can make that work. And uh, also, it might make balancing a little easier, I suppose, right? When we've got like a fixed number of players, it's kind of, kind of, kind of small. Uh, thanks, Electro Coplosion. Um, so th that's what we're going to try and do. As I said, as a, like a stretch thing, I might, if we, we make that, and I don't know, or if we don't, and it's not, I don't know, depending on how things go, uh, I might try and also, long term, what I wanted, I'd like to port, I've lost the, I had the page for it, but I don't know. I kind of want to port this game I made. Uh, fireball uh, to to use this and put it on GX games. I don't know like how well it'll like just the code I would would run. I considered just doing this for the stream, but like I kind of I think it's more the point of the stream is that I try and make something from from scratch. So we might look at that later uh, if we get a chance to. Um, so I guess the first thing we're gonna do is just try and make some player objects and guys basically get to the point the the, the matter is thing was at which was just like having some dudes sort of mooching around i have an empty project here all i have is like my helper functions that i kind of use for everything um that are just useful but otherwise which is which is kind of blank in here um so yeah i guess we just start with, we need like an o game right and uh, create i'm gonna just rewind back to that bit in the video to control my tabs a bit they're getting a bit crazy now let's uh oh I should, no. no 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 reopen close Re reopen yeah I want, I want the manual <laughs> we need that <laughs> we're gonna need that normally i'd have it on the other monitor but i kind of want you guys to see what i'm doing so i think i'll try and keep it all in one place we'll try and just work on the screen as much as we can um multiply setup let's just like the, this is like the frame, right? This is just the the, the basic stuff. So we kind of want that. We want um, we need an O player. We need something for that to like create player object, um, already forgotten what it what the the function was. This is this is why I use two monitors. Roll back to find player. Oh, yeah. Okay, there's actually more stuff you can add into this. So let's bring up the manual. Oh, we don't even have to anymore. We got feather now, right? Like, what does it say? Player object layer name. Oh, this I saw this in the patch notes actually because I had to update the beta just before the stream. The layer name to assign the created instance to default is instances. I mean, you could just do that manually. It's weird that I wonder why they thought it was important because it was kind of like a hot fix patch where they added this. That would make me think it was like, oh, I don't know, is it like impossible to otherwise move the layer of one of these objects? Oh. Oh, I suppose it's like to actually assign its default. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. It's just like, where did it create it otherwise? Or did it, I suppose all I would have assumed is it would have made it on the same layer as the object that made it. Um, but it defaults to the instances layer anyway, so that's fine. We'll just go with that. Um, then it was like, what well, if not rollback, uh, join game, dry run true. Um, is this right? Great game. Okay. No, it's gonna be too much work to actually try and uh, like keep swapping back to it like that. I am going to put it on my other monitor. We'll just refer to it a little bit. Um, I'll try and bring it over if I look at it for a long time. Uh, rollback. Oh, no. Dry game does not go into there. But it came up. Flag to only check if you should join a... Only check if you should join without actually doing it. Okay. I, I sort of get it. Um... Uh, number of players, four. Um. 
No, yeah, that's fine. So it won't start until it gets thought, right? Um, but we're doing this is like a test run. Is there anything else that can go in here? Sync test for development optional default is true. Name of a region to connect to. Curious what I mean might be seem a little bit like. Like what does that mean? Ah, uh, doesn't link very well at the moment. Back functions. Yes. A region. Uh, I'm just going to hope that's not important for us right now. So that's just going to what? It's going to just make some of whatever this object is. All right, so we only need to place a oh, game somewhere. And then we're going to want like a sprite or something for this, this player, right? Uh, classic SeanJS tutorial fashion. Smiley face. Um, and then I already remember from the, the video, it was like, what, if player ID, that's just a thing. Although Feather is going to be like, you didn't define us anywhere, but... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of a... Yeah, that's weird. Um, I'm surprised it doesn't at least flag it as something it would it would have, you know? I don't know. I'm surprised that's not green, you know? Sorry, I might have missed some chat. I'm going to move my windows around a little bit. Let's get a bit more comfortable in here. Sorry, it, like the stream might be a little bit like, you know... I might get interrupted a lot and have to move things around and change things a little. Like, I I don't stream a lot, right? So, like, I'm still not, like, the most smooth at it all. Um, so you just have to bear with me a little bit sometimes. Uh, gaming looks wild these days. Yeah, man, like, there's, it's rapidly evolving. We'll say that much. If a player ID equals, I think it's zero is, like, player one or whatever, right? Um, I don't really want to set this to, I mean, is it project-wide? Is this a, I actually, or is project-wide coming in the future? Would this be, like, game maker wide if I change this? I guess we just accept it <laughs> for now. Um, so I think we get, like, three of these, um, and... We're going to put them somewhere. So, actually, what we can probably do is be like x equals um, o game dot x equals o game dot y. I don't want to update power toys. Shut up, Windows. Are my Windows notifications really loud, by the way? If you hear like a dong, did that come through like exceptionally loud? Should I turn down my desktop audio? Let me know if that's a thing that's an issue. you got to let me know with some of this stuff. Don't sit in silence being like, man. This person's uh, audio is settings and stuff are terrible. Complain. Complain as much as you want about the stuff because I'm trying to get it all correct. So, like, yeah, just get in the chat and, and, and whine. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to regret saying that one day. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah. Um, so, if we just set all the players to that position, and then what we can do is be like... Yeah, actually, that's a good point. We can be like... We'll sequel... Length the x, um, length like 64 with a direction of like 90 times um, player ID, right? We'll do the same thing in like y. Um, I might be trying to be too clever before I really know how this works, but um. We like offset it a little bit, maybe. Like 
that should bottom us its way out. Right. Why is it? Is that... I've thought, I was going to say, is that a break point or is it telling me an error there? I think I just accidentally broke point for some reason. Okay, so I think actually, I think this just should just work. I mean, do we actually run it in the, I don't actually know. Do, do we run it in Windows? I'm out separately now. Open the OBJ player object and here add the create event. First of all, set the Y or vertical position to half the room. You didn't hear anything, Solman, that's perfect. Vertically. And then check if the player's ID is zero, which is the first player. If it is, then we set the X I'll look in a second on major. the horizontal position to 50. But if the player's ID is one, which is the second player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Run the game and both players will Okay, he just said run the game, so I'm presuming that's like, you know, he would assume we have windows and stuff set by default. Yeah, good spot. I'm surprised I didn't see that. Like, it didn't bother me the lines, but like different length. Um, so let's just see what the heck happens. Okay, uh, that's actually not what I expected there. Hang on. Um, middle center. Oh, I guess it's like... Um, So otherwise they're going to be different, right? Um, oh yeah, not that. There. Um, da -da -da -da. Okay. What's the fourth one? Be too clever here, alright. But it seems to be it's making them like at the moment anyway. Like, what have I what have I screwed up there? Should just be like from here. That's the length. Screwed up. Yeah, yeah, I I mean yeah, I don't really it, it, it feels like they're doing it in a bit of a different way, like how they would normally do it. Yeah, I'm really surprised that that's not like a like a green text thing, you know, like X and Y and so on. I guess it's because you specifically it won't do anything without rollback defined player, but it, it could have just been like minus one until then, you know, like. But I guess it might it more it confuse people when they're like seeing all the different built-in variables. I don't know. Randomizer is being done on all four sets, I think. Yeah, I mean, it should be, right? But it's going to make one of these and then be like... Oh, yeah, that's a good point. No, yeah, I see what you mean. Um, so we actually need to do this kind of thing. Um... We'll change the name if it works, but we'll just... Yeah, okay, this is more what we expected, right? Um, can I also... Just very quickly... I imagine this is going to break things if we keep it in for too long, but it's always nice to have for the time being. Um... Okay. Why... How do I keep getting random breakpoints? Is it just... You can just click here to make a breakpoint suddenly? That's really weird. I just... I don't really want to be able to act, like, make breakpoints that easily. Is it just... Maybe it's just something about the errors changed? Because I think maybe could you always do that, but you just have to click further back here? Or you just have to press, like, F9 or whatever, right? Yeah. What fan of that? This is the beta, yeah. Even, even appears in a weird place. That feels like a bug. Like, I don't know. Either way, this seems to like work, right? Um, and then, 
some like player input and just like start moving the things around. Um, what do I actually want the game to kind of like control like anyway? I don't know if we want to do it as basic as just like X, Y saying. I think like for a game like this, like acceleration and deceleration can be kind of like important. Yeah, so... Oh, cool. Not five. Um, my good old friends HSP and VSP are gonna make a return. And... Right, inputs. How does that all work again? The first step to moving gives you the input struct for a player. But we have to like get it at the start of the step. Okay. Let's store that in a local variable. We might just be able to use the defaults here. Let's but... check if input dot left is true which means the left arrow key is being held down. In that case, we move the player to the left. Well, I might just want to skip to the like the more the defining input bit. I'll enable offline testing from left, right. Up. Roll back define input left, right, up. And we do this in OGame create. And then I think we do the same thing. We just do roll back get input. Oh yeah, where are my line numbers? I don't know, man. There's just some preferences might be a bit screwed up because it's the beta version as well. Like, so it doesn't have any preferences I'll have set. Yeah, you can make like alternate binds and things in that that's strict, which is like, yeah, it's kind of does a does does a few other things that just like you normally would need like Juju's input thing for. Um. And I mean, like, that's, you, you mentioned, like, it replacing current input. It's not actually a bad idea if you want to, like, when you're making games, it seems like maybe to use the rollback, even if you're making a single player thing. Um, because then it's like, if you wanted to make it multiplayer, suddenly, like, you your, your inputs already use all the rollback stuff. Um, but who knows? Um, so, rollback, fine. Inputs. Um, uh, can I do this? Yeah, cool. I think we can. Um, so I think we can do something like this, right? Just be checked to be sure. Up and now you can use the ORD now for at the end go into the uh, now why, why would you take it out it's good now for aiming yeah you just what you just put an array um k okay. um vk left I have like a few of these. Um, I mean, I don't know what kind of resolution people are streaming at, by the way. Let me know if I should zoom in a bit more. People like can't really see the code and that kind of thing. Um, you'd think I would max screen more, but I actually, well, weirdly enough, when I'm making things quickly, I cry. It. I, I don't actually mind using the workspaces all much. Oh yeah, so I, I, if you, I mean, 
I think you found it, Tennis Hero, but like anyone else who's just looking for like the, the guides and stuff that I'm following, like the video and stuff I'm following, I think in the description on the stream on YouTube, there's a link to the blog post that has all the stuff in it. Um, and uh, and Mad Worm Stick has linked it as well for, for people on, on Twitch. So. Right up down. I mean, yeah, we just, yeah, just moving around. That's it's fine for now. Um, And then it's like what well, rollback gets input. Um, of which player do we want to get input? Well, player ID, because it's whichever one this is. Um, oh, I don't know what I'm doing there. So we, we do that. Then it's like what? Just like if left. But it's like it's weird. It's like underscore pressed you can do. Like that's so strange. Like I was really like. I'm glad you can do that because I was wondering how you do it, but like I would have expected like it to be a struct or something, like left like dot down or something like that, right? The fact that it seems to be you literally do underscore and like name another value, you don't need to specify an argument. Does it have a default? I don't think, the, uh, yeah, yeah, I think you're right in that you didn't do it in the video. Yeah. Um, but it's useful that you can do that, I suppose. You have to save the function return, it returns a struct of booleans. Have I missed something? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah, I get what you mean now. Sorry, I was confused. I thought you were talking about something else. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. But, like, I thought, well, I, yeah, what I was just talking about there, though, is, like, you can still be that, which is nuts to me. Like, why is it not? Like that. Um, as far as I can tell, again, maybe I'm still missing something there. Um, right. How do I want to get like the direction here? It's like, how have I done this before? Good question. Like, I'm overthinking this here, but like, I just want to check real quick like how um how fireball does its movement because that's like similar oh that's actually like i get like a oh uh, yeah, yeah yeah i know what okay never mind um rex equals like dot right, like minus, like input dot right. Yeah, that's, that's alright, Robert. We're, we're working it out live anyway, so like, don't worry too much. I don't know why I'm bracketing these. Like, part of the stream is like, you know, like, me putting this together, right? So I'm, I'm gonna make mistakes, we're gonna, you know, trundle along, we're, we're trying to see, like, you know, like, how easy is it to do this stuff? Yeah, like, I don't know, yeah, it's, it's strictly a struct of booleans. Why it should be simple? I, it's just, yeah, I don't know, it feels a little bit uncomfortable that it's, that it's like that. But, um, 
So then we have a direction, right? We can be like, um, I feel like I'm overcomplicating this. I always do. I always, why I always write my movement in a different way every time. Um, so. So what I'm doing now is I'm just like trying to wake up like just a, a rel like a basic like accelerative movement rather than just like moving X Y and stuff like we do in the tutorial. Um, Like we kind of need to like make that approach zero over time if you're not inputting anything. I actually don't know how I get my top speed from this. Maybe I've separated these out too early. I don't really like using speed in that, so I'm going to avoid those, but like... Um... How do I combine X speed and someone fix my brain? How do you combine like X speed and Y speed back into like a, a vector speed again? I can never remember how you do this. Like. Like find magnitude. Or a vector or something, right? BBC bite size revision guide. This will help me, baby. Oh, these are questions. I don't need the questions. I need the knowledge. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, get that bit, Robert. But... Yeah, no, I, I don't think you understand what I'm. Looking for. Or I, I might be being an idiot, but Excel is not my max speed. No, Richard. Three minus five. Yeah, so like that. Well. Oh, it's right, okay, it's like literally just um So overall like just SP is gonna equal um HSP
just want to make some things easier for myself. I'm making things harder for myself now to make things a little easier for myself a little later. I, I really don't think you're reading the same code I am, Robert, but well, I don't know, maybe maybe I'll eat those words, we'll see. Um. I kind of want to move just with these because that makes things easier, but then I like want to be able to cap my overall speed um, caring about like diagonals. So like if I do that... I mean for now, yeah, I can just, I can, I can do this, but like... Like it's adding that every single time, you know, it's not like that's... <laughs> It's not the maximum speed in any sense. And let's just, for now, let's just make sure that. Because people are hurting my brains with their comments, so let's. Yeah, okay. It's not in any way the max speed. I like the other ones just accelerate off randomly. Acceleration way too low, but that's okay. Um. And it's like, yeah, I can just cap VSP and HSP, but then it's like, oh, you move way faster in the, the, the diagonals, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, and I can never remember how I usually do this. Um... <laughs> I think for now we just maybe won't care. Um, um, I guess I don't want to just sit here looking at movements. We're here to do multiplayer, so let's let's try and focus on that. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly so, man. Um, I just yeah, I don't. I worked out how. Can't remember how I how I usually do that. It's getting very warm in here. I'm gonna need to open a window very soon. Quite funny how they don't jitter around in the same way, but they just like their random inputs end up sending them off that way. Always that way as well. Interestingly. Okay, I want to accelerate way quicker though. And also have it like approach zero if like there's not any um there's not any input. Um. Yeah, it's it's just going to be a strat. You move fast diagonally, it's whatever. Okay. Yeah, much better as well. They're staying in place now. Let's also zoom this in a little bit. Looks forty by four eighty. We don't one two eighty. Uh, some twenty. Um. No, that's not what I wanted. Sorry, we want. 
That's fine room size wise. We want to change the viewports. And then what we want to do that's, that's the more, more interesting thing is like we want to uh, actually tie a camera to a player. Like each player. So these are our, our four players. Now, like, how do I get the camera like follow each one of them around? Like, that's okay. So that's a tat. We do actually want a bigger room. Um, we'll make it like, I don't know. yeah. Why not one two eight seven twenty? Each direction there. Game can like um, x equals room width. Okay, then we get like, this so there's a rollback event, right? There's a, like a rollback start that's like, uh, where is it? There's a rollback start event. So this happens apparently just like when the, like, the game starts or whatever, right? And this brings back some information with it that should be able to tell us like which, wh what our local player is. And then I want to put that somewhere I can always access it because I think that's just going to be an important variable going forwards. <laughs> so rollback create game, rollback, rollback events. First start. True if the multiplayer game just started or false if only the room was changed. Okay, so this happens when we change rooms as well. Also trigger when the room is later changed. Good to know. The total number of players in the game. The ID of your local player starting at zero to two. Can it start? Like, do we actually need all four players to start it? Is that just like a rule? It takes the number of players that must be connected for the game to start. You can optionally force the game to start before all players have start joined by call. Right, okay, so there is probably a way while you're waiting to be able to call this and be like, and, and have the players be like, start anyway. That's nice. Hey, Hel Helesian? Nervous looking. Yeah, they, they should look nervous. E e super gamers, so yeah, that's, that's not useful for what I want because that... The player ID in... And, and this is what was concerning me at first, because like, yeah, we have a player ID in here that we use for all kinds of stuff. But that's just telling, that's just this object's player ID, right? We've got four of those that are mooching around. We, we can't, we don't know which one of these belongs to this, uh, to, 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 to the, the player in, you know, this instance of the game, right? And that's what we care about. And we get that, I believe, from rollback start, um, which, what's the name of it? We get, is it a struct to this or what? Um... How have we gone back to this page? Oh, just it's so easily distracted. It rollback event. Rollback event param. So I want global dot this layer to equal rollback dot event param. Uh, surprised I didn't come up actually. Player player ID. Okay. And then player local is true for the local player. Is it where, where, when, when, where is that true? Player local. I've not heard that mentioned anywhere. I mean, that's interesting. If so, rollback variables, global variables. I'll play a local. Aha. Okay. If play right, it's just a boolean that's in the player objects. Okay, so that's interesting as well. Um, I still will do this just so that I have that if I need it. Um. 
I might never need that though, I guess, if that's the case. So I can do this if play local. See, we're all learning together. But I mean, this is the thing as well, is like, in a way, part of the point of the stream was like, how easy is it to work out this stuff and suss all these things out and so on. And I'm just like picking at bits from the manual. But I also have the obvious advantage, like, a set of obvious advantages. One, a lot of experience at gaming, and two, um, a bunch of you guys in the chat who have also been trying this stuff out and are able to tell me the stuff that I'm missing and, and so on. So obviously there's that. Unlike the int value. It's a true, well, a true ball. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it serves a similar purpose, but yeah, um, yeah, it makes sense. Um, it's still another one of these annoying ones that's just like makes Feather nervous and me nervous about being like a a, a blue avar, but like whatever. Um, especially because then it like makes you think you've been inconsistent, like variable naming wise. If but when when it's the green things, you don't. Yeah, it's annoying. So if the player is local, then we can be like. Um, Well, I guess we want a camera object, and then we just tell that camera object to, like, do its thing, right? Can I just, like, add, like, I don't know, do I have, like, a camera tutorial I can just nab a thing from? Camera video, oh no, that was... What was this? Might be good. Oh no, I don't want that. Where's the... Uh... Some object I can just nick. What what have I made recently that just uses a simple camera? The Pokeboat one's got a bunch of extra nonsense in it. Uh, probably like an LD game. What's LD forty nine? Yeah, this will work. Objects. Scrap you. Good old faithful. that that's probably useful um, I think we'll have to actually also add some other values on top of that but that's okay Don't change me. Just want to get this stuff quick out of the way. Um, get rid of all this. Cool. That's about the most minimal version I can think of, actually. Kind of game I'm making. I'm trying to make like a little hide and seek game using the new multiplayer stuff in the beta. And we're just kind of trying it all out and seeing how it all works, learning a bit about the system. Um, so far, we've got some players that move around, and it all seems to be going okay. Date, object, position. Blah, 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 blah.
Okay. So I think really that's just kind of it, right? Okay, all those are one player. Now I kind of want to do the test thing, right? So let's go back to our video. Again, let me know if the music gets too like intense or loud or whatever. For the right key input, then the OBJ games create events. You need to disable offline testing. So just set the second argument here to false. Then up here, select the Opera GX target if you haven't already. Now before running the game, go to the GX Games website and make sure you are logged in. This is required for testing multiplayer. Okay, so let's do that. Open up this Bizarro browser again. Um, I don't even know where we go for this. Where is... Go where? logged in now before running the game go to the gx games website and make gx games website i don't know what that is you can see i'm very well informed on the the gx games stuff this is opera gx it's the the, the gaming browser that people will own game maker now <laughs> sign in do i even have like a I, I might not even have an account. Let's sort that out. Last pass, give me a give me a sick new password. Save that last pass. Add item. Password. Brock GX his name. Okay. Yeah, this is stuff I should have done beforehand, but it is what it is. Confirm my age. Golly. I'd rather not. <laughs> 1989. Oh, who you are with my own unique avatar? I forget. Was, do I still have my Butterfree thing on here anywhere? I've got some pictures of me there. Sure, we'll go with that for now. That is literally what I'm wearing today, so I guess that works. Um, okay, so I'm logged in. I'll have a corner to Dev Cloud. What that means. Never changed. <laughs> I would hope I had since then. That video was a while ago that that, that image is from. Um, okay, so we're logged in. You'll also be able to invite your friends and play with them. First of all, in OBJ Games Create Events, you need to disable offline. We're sure that the point of the video is to work with the rollback functions, but we don't actually have access to the manual to find out how they work. Can you not access the manual? Good 
Like, you, you literally just type beta in front of, like, the menu. Just get the beta. I, I don't know, you have to sign up for the beta these days. I don't really know, I don't remember how it works. It's like beta dash, beta dash manual dot yoyo games dot com. And it's like, it's linked from the tutorial. Like, you just go to, like, the tutorial. I mean, it was, I'll, I'll admit it's, like, a little bit hidden. But the, uh, you go to, oh, it's literally linked in the video. Read the, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't know, it'll take a while for the chat to catch up to that, but still. In testing, so just set the second argument here to false. Then up here, select the, the Opera GX target if you haven't already. Now before running the game, go to the GX Games website and make sure you are logged in. Yep. This is required for testing multiplayer. Okay. Then back in Game Maker, run the game. It should open up in Opera GX. Once the game starts up, Scroll down and you'll find the copy things. share URL button. Click on it and that will copy a link that another player can use to join your game. At the moment we are testing locally so your friends can't join yet. So open a new tab and paste the link here. Drag it out into its own window and just lay them out so you can see both at the same time. They will connect and you will be able to play your game for now with yourself. Okay. So we target this, Opera GX, uh, we're logged into the thing, we turn this uh, to false, and then we run the game, apparently. So yeah, 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 yeah. No default region set. Did I, was that something I skipped? Pretty sure they didn't set a default, did they? Is that a region? Since you just made an account, you'll need to set your region and account. Okay. Thank you, Squoggles. But there's a bit of a. Well, it's not. That's not really a hurdle with the system. That's just like getting all the information across. Um. Oh, I can't remember. In. GX browser profile account details default multiplayer region I guess Europe has this been like oh I don't know like I get a lot of my viewers are from like NA right so like mm, I don't I don't know how that's gonna affect things but I don't know well it's where I am so <laughs> wait did I save that there's no save button that's just there's just not used to there not being like a save button or whatever, but I guess that's just fine. So what, we just try again? Uh, variable X. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. We need to right. We don't create that until I remember this. We have to make the camera here. Uh, instance uh, creates depth, uh oh, just layer. Um, uh, X, Y, actually, that solves a few things. Um, layer, oh, camera. Um, I like I'm making breakpoints everywhere by accident with this. It's, it's quite annoying. Just delete these. Uh, there's something else in here I wanted to get rid of, because, yeah, we'll... Oh, no, that's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. No? What? No. Oh. Oh, we, we didn't actually get rid of the one we had in the game. We're going to end up with like a million tabs of this, aren't we? Okay. Uh, connect to server. We're player zero of total four players. Um, 
Oh, exception thrown just because I dragged out one. Oh no, that's the old one. Uh, copy share URL. one. So now I actually have to do this like a couple of times because we've got four, four players. Uh, it's wiki, how do I? I'm gonna need to like find a way to split these out. We also should put a background in the game so we can tell a bit more like what's going on. It's doing some stuff. So it just took a little while there, but I think. Okay, the camera didn't make though. Oh, because the yeah, okay, I oh, get what's going on with the camera. Um, that's okay, but there's some more player all over the bit all over the place. I think we'll set it back to two players for now, just for testing it. Making it a bit easier than having like a million screens. But hey, we're here. We've got something going. That's this demonstrably has more than multiple players. Um, that's cool. Game. Yeah. What what we'll do is we'll we'll actually use this. <laughs> After all, um, no, yeah, well, yeah, actually, uh. Do that, and then just in no camera, we can just be like with a uh, player if local player or player was it player local? <laughs> I think it was was it player local? I think it was player local. Yeah. should work and then we're gonna do if I bring it down to two is it gonna screw the way the players get made I don't think so no oh stupid Now I get this to maybe do this by like default. Maybe I'll shrink this down. It's gonna be a pain like resizing these every time, you know. I suppose if I just don't close these two windows that are in the right spot, ish. Yeah. Nice. Okay, that's cool. I'm gonna put, and we need some kind of background in here, otherwise we're gonna go insane. Um, trying to like uh, work this out. So let's um, quick sprite. Oh wait, that's not too fancy, just stretch that out. 
16. So many like different browsers and things open now. This is gonna become interesting quite quickly. I I wanna like close this for now. Yeah. Good. Uh copy share URL. Yeah, seemed like it was like took a lot hot longer. Like when we went up to four players for all the syncing stuff to happen, which makes me worry a little bit about what it's gonna like you know about like trying to increase the the amount of players and stuff. That that I can already feel a bit of lag with it to be honest, and it's not just like the acceleration code. Um, which is like slightly worrying for something so simple, but. Yeah, we'll see how we get on. But this is cool. So now we're there. We've got access to like the player ID. We're, like we like we've got everything we kind of need now, right? So like this is this really is just sort of like like it's going, you know? Like you, we've got the player, we've got the players, we've got their like IDs. We know which one is the local player. Sky is kind of the limit from here, or well. Sky and the performance and like networking performance and so on is kind of the limit, I suppose. And also the player count of four is also the limit. There are more limits, but like generally from here, I think we can kind of just do whatever we want. The other player input, random input. Oh, it should or it, uh, well, no, it, it's not doing it. It only does that when we're like, I think you can make it do that manually, but it also, it just does that when we test it like locally. Yeah, so it's hosted through like GX Games at the moment. I do not have any idea what that means for the future in terms of like. So like when we look at this, uh, we just take a break here for a moment. Like when we look at this stuff and where they announced it. Um, maybe where is it? So this is kind of the only line we've got talking about this. I do not know, and it seems sadly maybe a little unlikely in my head, but I, I don't know, because they've not really said anything about it. If it'll ever become possible for us to like deploy and manage these servers ourselves. Um, because we don't have I, I accept the way this works is there's always going to be a limit on the control we have over it because if you want full control, you, you know, you can you can already do that in Game Maker. You know, you can still do all the manual stuff, you use your sockets and all that good stuff anyway. Like, you still have networking functionality in Game Maker. You can go all the way and be super manual with it. This is to make things simpler for people to create stuff and share and all that stuff. Um, but it does... The more kind of, you know, sandboxed it is in that way, um, and black boxed it is in that way, that we can't, like, you know, we don't have any control over how this works, um, and we, and importantly, we can't, if we can't host it ourselves in a place that we are responsible for, rather than, like, strictly game maker, you know, it's like one, you, you would always have that worry of, like, well, what if, you know, they pull the plug on this, or what if the, the servers go down, and that kind of thing, right? Um... in terms of commercial work, but in terms of just like, you know, actually getting something to be able to share it, this is obviously still really important and valuable, but like, but yeah, I have so many questions. Like it, it's gonna be very interesting to know, let's to see like how this develops, 
like like where where it goes, what the future for it is, and what how extensive of a thing they they think that this can become. Um. So I'm not gonna lie, just from the offset, this element of it doesn't feel immediately great. I mean, I, I all online games are whatever. It's very early in the beta and fit and so on. Oh, we've like timed out. I don't even. Oh, but it resumed. And then that just went away. What? Disconnected. Oh, oh. All right, we're back. So why? Yeah, well, it's a good question. What happens with like connecting and disconnecting and stuff? I don't really know the flow of all this. And it's also like, because it's all so black boxy, it's really hard to kind of predict. I, I had really no idea what was going to happen. I don't really know what's going on with the... So, so that now, now we're just sort of playing locally because we like tabbed out for a little while. We just sort of lost synchronization. Isn't that kind of the, the gist? It's disconnected from player one. We can't just like reconnect in any way. That's just, that's kind of just GG. Um... But I don't know, like, there's there's a lot more stuff in here. Um, before we go any further, because I would like to develop this out a little bit, get something you guys like actually playing it, get it like on the the, the thingy page or whatever, um, even if it's just something simple. Um, but let's just look at what's actually in here, because like I just don't know enough about this yet. Trigger when the game resumes after an interruption. The ID of the player that reconnected is stored in there. So games can reconnect? But it seems like it has just given up, so I don't know how, like, do I have to manually get it to try and do that? Like if I call, like and I group, but I'm not actually sure. Like, can I call this when like I get disconnected? It's like it's not clear, right? Leaving a room. So when a host loom leaves, ownership of the room is transferred to another player, so it can continue. Game only ends when all the players have left. But it has just like, you know, when I'm just like tabbed out, it just like disconnects me and it doesn't seem like it's like trying to reconnect me. Like the players just go, I mean, it's hard to know because like my background scrolls forever here. We've not really put any limits on the room. We need to put some bounds in so we can see what's going on a bit better. Um, yeah. And it's interesting because I feel like... Like, so when, when I'm just thinking about when I write collision logic for this, right? For, like, the players, like, walking into walls and stuff. That stuff's going to, like, be calculated on every single client, I guess? Like, for every player? Like, it's not like I'm just sending the XY position of the player or over or anything like that, right? Like, they're all running this code and they're just... The, the, it's the inputs that are, like, multiplayer. And then, like, it's doing its own thing to synchronize all of that. And manage everything. I mean, I think there's a lot you can do to control it yourself. This is just like the, it, I say, it's like you can quick start it this way. But I mean, you could have like the thing, all the players join and it starts. You don't even have to make the objects. Like you can, act, you can do some manual stuff there. I'm pretty sure. It's just like the easy way to do it is to like yeah do the the rollback uh, the, the rollback create game or whatever uh, rollback define player or whatever and just like have to stick an object in but I don't think you have to do that you can like manually create them 
So, you know, I think you can still sort of do a lot of your own stuff, but... What are you on about, Tennis Hero? Um... <laughs> Well, well, no, but in terms of right, I, I, in terms of writing game logic, Mad Wormstick, I think like because I'm I'm gonna have to write game logic for like O player to like do like collisions and stuff in here, and then like, but each one of these is doing that in each version of the game, right? Uh, it's not big. It's not necessarily the end of the world or anything. It's just how it would be for local multiplayer, but like. It's a shame that you can't really get any savings from that anyway. Um, so I guess the next thing we want to do is we like when you like assign one of these players to be like the bad guy. I need kind of a game loop, right? My thinking was like, hang on, let's um, something really re as, as quick as we can, really. I guess it's just like you know, one player is uh, like. Uh, a monster. Um, other three players have to find three things. I don't know if they have to like stay at them for a little while or something. You know, it's in that in that way. Trying to like, 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 how does Dead by Daylight work? Are there multiple generators or whatever? That there, there, there's more than you need, right? You needed like four generators, but I think there's more than four on the map because otherwise, what would you, you know, the monster could just like camp the final one or whatever, right? Um, the game logic of this should work. There's five and you only need four, or something like that. You first of all, avoid the monster. I mean, we could just literally make it you avoid, for, yeah, like yeah, like you say, tag with a time where we avoid you for X amount of time. I just wonder if we can be more interesting. Um, so otherwise, it can just be a thing of like, well, I can't find the person, so it's just over, you know? But like, I want incentive for them to actually be able to, to have to go to places or whatever that are like risky or whatever. What should it be? A generator seems really contrived. Like what? What? I mean, it's going to be contrived no matter what. But like, they have to find just and um, activate. Um, we'll go with three thingies. Um, rather, than, and there will be there will be four of them. Then once they've done that, how does that even work in Dead by Daylight? It's like, well, they've opened the door. Does the guy just stand in front of the door or whatever? I, well, I suppose he can't kill them very quickly, so it's just like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's not quite like that, is it? Um, I think for now we'll do, we'll just say that. Activate three thingies out of four. Um, to win the game. Um, also a timer. If the timer expires, uh, the monster wins. Or the mirror. Maybe the monster just gets stronger and stronger over time or something. We'll, we'll see. But we'll, uh, we'll go with that basic loop. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, Norris Robert, thanks, thanks for the standby.
Yeah, I'm just thinking it's already half three. I don't want to be strict like. Um, I wasn't sure how quickly or anything this was going to go, so. Try and keep it simple. Say so we want we don't want to focus too much on like making a really fancy like uh like good feel good game or whatever. We just you know we we're, we're seeing how effectively we can do this stuff. Um, make Among Us too. Oh yeah, I should just should have just done that. Among Us two only four players. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's like a mini game people would play in Among Us, right? Where they would basically turn it into hide and seek. Um, okay, so first thing we want one of these players to be a big bad. So and of course, the color of evil is red. <laughs> It's quite like, I don't know, like... Uh... Thank you, Alison. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you for hanging out. You know what, that's, that's actually kind of just perfect. Like, I kind of want them to start this and then be like... <laughs> yeah, here's what I'm going to do, right? Uh, we're going to swap them to this frame whenever the monster is like actually kind of nearby. <laughs> Now, like, do I want to make a new object or we just want to, like, kind of change the behavior of O player? Um, like, can we create an, like, it's, it's interesting. It's just like, because we, like, my instinct here would obviously be, like, okay, we make a new object, right? But, like, this is the object we make for all the players. So, like, the question here becomes, like, do I just make being an enemy kind of a state of the player? Um, I think that would probably be the simplest solution. Um, or is there some way like we like swap out? You know, if we do instance change or whatever, like how does that interact with this? Um, like, do we keep all the player ID stuff and the uh, connectivity and all that? I don't really don't know. So that sounds terrifying to me a little bit. So what I'm going to do is go with what I know would work, which is actually, yeah, just take that approach of making it a, like, state of the player. Um, <laughs> oh, my overlay finally crashed. It took a while. Argument on incorrect type callback chat. Ah, uh, someone try a command and it didn't work. Seeing it. That's weird. It's okay. Um, seems to be otherwise. That might mean it just crashes again when we start up. If it does, we'll just swap to our other thing. We don't want to be screwing around with it for too long. So it lasted a very long time, though. I'm kind of impressed. It's getting there. See if it just immediately crashes again. Because of just something in YouTube chat is trying to do. Yes. Yeah, it crashed again. It is what it is, so what we're going to do is uh, we move over to this. <laughs> and this is where we'll live for now. I can still read the chat and everything. I still see you guys there, but we just we, we, we lose the overlay. Oh, 
unfortunately. It just is how it is, but it's, uh... Yeah, I don't really know what happened. Like, so I'm not seeing anyone do a command in the chat or anything. Um... I'm gonna, I don't think it was Allison's super chat, because, like, it happened a bit late or after that. Yeah, I don't know. 716 has a message retracted, but I don't know what it originally was. So, uh, but... Okay. We, we assumed this might happen. We actually, I, I actually thought that would happen, like, way earlier in the stream than it has done. That's cool. Right, so I think what I would actually kind of like to do now... Um, let's actually make this like a... Uh, state player 3. And a monster free, which will actually just be like the same to begin with. I don't like duplicating code or anything, obviously, but like we just we just keep things simple. Um, no, we like state equals uh state player three. Because we, kind of, we don't want to just kick it straight into, like, just immediately assign a person the monster or whatever. We want to kind of, like, have there be a moment or whatever where everyone's gathered in the middle and everything's fine and then someone becomes, like, monster or whatever. <laughs> no chat view. No, unfortunately, the overlay broke. Um, that's what I was just talking about. So, um, unfortunately, I, t Twitch and YouTube are separate once again. But I can I can still see all the chat and everything. Oh, tag might have been interesting actually. Like yo, so like a monster touches someone and they become the monster kind of thing, like crawl. Um, but then I, I don't really know how that like ends or whatever. I guess. Like least time spent as the monster at the end of time or something, but I don't know, it could be a kind of boring camp, like kind of camp heavy gameplay. Uh, I don't think so, should tank. Um, but uh, don't take my word for it. I'm noticing that this like mode is actually like I'm gonna take my headphones, I don't need them anymore now. If we're not, we, we had problems with echo before, but I don't actually need them now, so I'm gonna take these back off. Still erasing a bit of my head. Watch this though, I can summon Dragonite. Where's... I can just wave my hands here. And we like summon an ethereal ghost Dragonite. <laughs> Progress of Delta Ring going? I have no idea, Batman, because uh, like the work I did was on Chapter 2. Um, I've not had any involvement in, in Chapter 3 thus far. Um, it's not entirely out of the question that I will have involvement in it, but um, right now I'm not doing anything on, on chapter 3. So uh, I, I, I couldn't tell you even if I, 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 even if I was allowed or whatever, you know. Why do I have to use scripts for state machine? I mean, you can do it how, how you want. Um, I'm I'm gonna do it in such a way that I make these functions here, and then in the staff event, I'm just gonna do this because that's nice and easy. Um, like, well, I guess we could write how we want to become the monster. Um, do that once, but I don't really need a function for that. Um, but when do I want that to happen? Uh, after all this has started, the game 
the rollback starts. So that's just kind of like when the game's kind of kicking off, you know? So this is, we've made the camera and everything. Let's focus on the player. Um, make like a sort of secondary game that's like around, I think. I want to kind of have a look after some of this stuff and be like, Uh, we'll get a font of some kind. F, uh... Do you like a countdown? Silver. Yeah, why not? Um, what's the idea for this game? It's going to be just like a simple hide and seek game. Guys, still playing through. Well, if I still playing, hang on, let's reset this. Down for you. Yeah, let me know if the audio levels get too wonky. It'll be difficult to manipulate. Yeah, so we're doing like a little hide and seek game where a player's gonna become a monster and you kinda of have to avoid the monsters, activate some things and get out, which is kinda of like doing a really sort of simplified dead by daylight game loop in a way. Um I just thought it would be interesting. Thought it would like try out the multiplayer things in an interesting way, it would raise a few questions that we would have to answer about how it works, while hopefully being simple enough that we can you know, make it work. Uh, silver has actually been my go-to font for a lot of things lately, as a, like a pixel font. Um, it's really good, has loads of like really vast Unicode support, so it's good for localization and that kind of thing. Um, F, we're just gonna call this like normal or whatever, it's like the normal font. Oh, I didn't bring in um, draw set font, did I? That's like my most useful like function. Um, draw set text is usually what I do, right? Um, font uh, H align, V align. Set font font draw set color color draw set change line change line draw set e line e line one of my favorites all the functions yeah definitely didn't bring it copy that round white um wait f normal c white of a center of uh, a yeah, actually middle Um, oh, we can try a time source. That's always fun. Um, I always forget how you get the basic like camera nonsense. Gamera, gamera, camera get 
view x, uh, view camera. down uh yeah we'll actually want this to be like probably more like what's i can't remember what size is this actually likes oh 24 25 Something looks okay. Alright, we're gonna go back to testing this locally so we can. How can I do that? <laughs> Done it again there. Oh my, no. Nah. Oh, yeah. Uh, angle 10 or whatever, and then I don't know. We, uh, I think I'm just using an alarm because it's easier, All right? Probably easier to be synced as well. Um, uh, nothing for now. Uh, feather complicated. I guess my recent video on it kind of sums it up, but like. Hmm. Oh, I don't even know why I bother. I literally just use the draw GUI event. Oh, and also, yeah, I got <laughs> X twice. Do that a lot. Um. It's there. It's not quite what we wanted. Um, surface in size, even surface uh, res W res H. Okay. And then let's actually make sure before we just do too much local stuff on Windows, we actually <laughs> before we might have run into a million problems we weren't expecting. So let's actually make sure we are testing this locally properly. Okay. Um, oh, that's the wrong URL. Okay. I think I've Pixel interpolation, you can turn that off. Okay, good. So it seems to be working. Specifically in Opera GX. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Then this needs to repeat this alarm.
Just doing this every time is a little bit of a... Especially when we want to make it 4 player or whatever, like I want to do that every time. You could also quite easily, I suppose, write your own stuff to be like, you know, red, like a lobby or whatever what you do, and you like have each player ready up and stuff like that. It seems like it would be fairly straightforward to do that kind of thing. Um... Okay. Alright, in this case we start the round? Yeah, maybe we can actually just keep it doing rounds in one game so people can just keep playing continuously or whatever. Um... With um, O player. Okay, hang on. We want to do like macro player count. Normally I would put these all in one place, but we're being quick and lazy today. So, playing count two. Um, so, we can swap that for that. And then we can reference it other places, and we just don't have to worry about us changing that, screwing things up. Did appear? I have no idea. Like I, like I have so many quite like this just all came out of nowhere for me. I didn't even know this was a thing being like made, right? Uh, yeah. So when the timer runs out. We want to pick a random player. Um, equals I random player count. Uh, if a uh, player ID equals monster, then we become the goddamn monster. So how? Um, I guess what we would do is have things like, as well as just state at the bottom there, would be like... three equals this, right, and then... That would be like equals a uh, player monster state. Oh, I thought feather was better at tracking that kind of thing. Like, what did I spell that wrong? Maybe state monster. No, I got that right. Oh, oh no, I didn't. I got it completely wrong. It is just state monster. Pretty cool. Um. Yeah, I suppose we have to update that again, right? We can't just do that. Then, um... Those all we it feels a bit messy, but we can just put all the stats and stuff for the monster here, so we can change like acceleration to be lower or higher. I'm not actually sure. Want the max speed to be a bit, maybe a bit lower. I don't know. Maybe we actually just keep them the same for now. That could be kind of terrifying. We've not. I've, I've no really idea how to balance this kind of game, so we'll we'll. Try and keep it basic and answer each question as it comes, I suppose. So, 
Um, but we can set all that stuff in here if we need to. Oh yeah, it's naught to yeah. So if player count is two, player count minus one, right? So it's like naught or one. So you see three um, sprite index equals s monster, and something I want to change in the player's state is uh, well, image speed equals zero. If um, Distance to. Oh, it's tricky because, like. We need to know, like, the instance ID of the monster, like, at all times. Well, I, I can't just be, like, oh, monster now because it's one of the players. Um, how do I, like, inform all of these guys when this happens? So it's like. global dot monster ID yeah okay Uh, which, hmm, the start will be nothing if monster exists, yeah. That's equal zero, and then when this kicks off, uh, status equals one. If Around dot status equals uh, one. If point distance. So what I'm trying to do here is like work out if the monster is like actually anywhere near us. Global dot monster ID dot x. Global dot. Oh yeah, found found that. I'm sorry, that's kind of cool. Less than, I don't know, 128. Image index. Image index equal zero. Image index equal one. Yeah, so what I'm trying to do, sorry, is like when the player is really close to the monster, we're gonna have them show the scared face. Um we'll see if that see if that works. Um So I think I'm sure we'll have missed something. Probably just forgot to establish some variables here and there. That's usually the thing. Like, it's really hard for me to track all that stuff at once. Okay. So I'm expecting some kind of crash when this hits zero or nothing that happened for some reason. We'll see what goes on. Okay. Some kind of crash. Interesting, like, it comes up here, but. Uh, variable get 1002.monster. Oh. Right. Okay. Now it's run on this one. <laughs> uh, copy show URL. Wait, where's these player? They're like invisible. But they're, they're visible on this. Whoa, what's going on here?
player is just like like the game seems synced for everything. I'm getting the info here, and they're like the, the thing is even working. Like, ooh, it's scary, and then runs away. But like, it's just not on this screen. This feels a little bit like something just screwed up at the uh, the net with the, the the server side stuff, but I have no idea what. Creating two player objects in room doesn't seem to throw in any like errors or anything. The only way to know for sure is if we do it, it like happens again, right? So it might still just be something I've done. Let me show you our clothes. Okay, so this time, for whatever reason... That's the last step. Not sure what happened. A little worrying, but it is what it is. Um, this only really needs to happen if... if Status zero. These breakpoints driving me mad. All right, let's bring that beat back. Okay. Give a thingies so we need we need some thingies to be activated by the players probably also want some level design but I guess we'll come to that um oh dang These even look like, or even at a basic level. I think they should like fill up or something over time. I don't know. from one color to another. Esoteric shape or something will do for now. Three things. How should we spawn them? They could be in fixed positions, we could semi randomize them.
Sitting position doesn't need to be managed. Because we really just need it as like a marker of positions. Which will allow us to place them before the game logic starts. We end up very imbalanced of just like all of the, the the things just like spawn in one corner or something. But we'll see how we get on. Um. Okay. Ooh, we've got a whole bunch of things. So when the round kicks off. We want to pick one of those, uh, or we want to pick a player count plus one of them, and uh, turn them into actual things. I add myself to a game, what would I look like? So I'm talking about the fog dog. Um, I guess I would just look like me, I don't know. <laughs> I never really thought about that. In a way, like, some of my D&D players interpret one of the characters in my game as kind of being me, and it's like a goblin time lord. So maybe that. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm sweating, and it's so... I'm going to open a window very quickly. That is immediately better. Apparently I've dropped 803 frames at some point or other. 0.1% of the broadcast. Shameful. Okay, so... We need to like, I guess put all the things in like a list. Randomize that list and then just sort of go through them in order, right? Yes, list. Great. Um, where's oh thing position? He should basically be invisible. Um, yes, list. Add other dot spawn pause list value of oh yeah just its ID or just on my ID even ID yeah yes let's shuffle shuffle all these around. Uh, the reason I don't do that Igby is because I'm honestly just kind of quiet about it because I don't really, like, it's not really anyone else's, like, business to a lot of extent. Like, I'm, I know it's on my Twitter, but... Like, it doesn't really bother me when, when people get it wrong, you know, unless the people, like, I care about or, you know, people who are close to me and so on. I appreciate it when people get it right, but, um... Yeah, it's just just a personal thing. Um, I uh, forgot what I was doing. We shuffled this list of all the positions. So then we kind of just, yeah, we just um, repeat five, I guess. Uh, repeat uh, player count. Plus one. Uh, 
Yes. I don't know. Yeah, I want to... Yeah, there's four players. Yeah. Yeah, no, we'll keep it that way, yeah. I was thinking, oh, the enemy is like one of the players and so on, but it's alright, we'll just we'll run with this as the numbers. Um, yes, list, like, we can like just delete or something, right? Or we just like get the top value and then remove it. Oh, right, we can just do this, right? Um, one pause list, position, is it one? Or is it zero? Zero. Manual says. Equals a spawn pause list. Zero? And then delete that one and uh with pause We won't do instance change, we'll just do instance create because I'm really not sure how instance change interacts with like managed ob non managed objects changing into a managed ob yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Um um, X, Y. Yeah, we'll just go with the same layer. Those for a different layer of ourselves. Just control it through the room editor that way. Oh, thing. We don't need to pass a bar or anything to it. I have to use like draw a percent or something. There are max amount of players. The new model player four currently. No problem, Meg. I'm glad it was helpful. Live by nine. <laughs> like honestly, I probably would just go hide and seek. Or, I don't know. Monster escape. Something dumb. So let's just make things look a little less terrible. If we draw text changed, was that? Well, that's a thing, right? I'll transform. Two, two, zero. Yes, let's destroy, spawn, pause, list. We don't. Uh, actually no, we'll just, we just hang on to that, because round might be able to, like, loop. It doesn't really, like, I'm, it, it's weird, because in my head I'm like, oh, this is like a game jam, and I've got so much time to finish, and, like, and the time is basically, like, you know, until I want to finish streaming, which is in kind of like an hour and a half, honestly. I don't want to stream super late today. Um, but I'm thinking, honestly, it doesn't really matter how much we get done. The point is we just want to try as much multiplayer stuff as possible. 
It would be nice to like have it shared. We can actually get people to the point where we like try the, the playing of it together. But for that to happen, we'd get like just a game loop. It doesn't have to be good, but we can get that much. That's interesting. Is that just out of sync or what? What's going on there? Just in different places. They're just strict, like, it's just strictly not the same info, what? Connection resume? They're just not in the same place, it's just wrong. Oh yeah, I've got R on game restart, but that's obviously never going to work. So... Let's try that again. Yeah, you are out. Right, well you can see it immediately though, like it's just it's just not the same. The game state is just not the same. Is it because we're oh we might be randomizing outside of Oh, how did we not? How did this not come an issue earlier? If that is the case, because we in old game, yeah, we randomized before. Yeah, we can't do that. Um, oh, round can randomize though. So then that should be synced. How did that not? That makes sense, but it doesn't make sense that we didn't run into that issue earlier, right? Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't changed anything, Olgara, so this is just how it is. The random number C is set to be read only. Is it? Wow, that's interesting. So does that... How do you... How do you randomize in this kind of context, then? What's the... So, I mean, I mean, that's kind of fine in a way. Well, no, because we, we want random positions for spawn points. But where do we randomize? We can't randomize beforehand because that's not synced to the players. We can't... How do we... Where do we... Can we do it in, like, rollback start or something? Yeah, it works if you do it at game start, but that's a problem because... Each player is going to get like a different result than that if you do it before rollback start. It has to be after rollback start. I could try there. It might be possible that they they randomize themselves, like yeah, like server side, like it's just done automatically. This is the problem with black box. We we don't know. We don't know how it works. Yeah, okay, so it it doesn't mind me doing that. So let's just get rid of it entirely. Let's just see if we just don't need it. Oh, I could set... No, no, they say you can't change the seed after the rollback start, so even if we knew what the seed was from one game, um, I don't know that you could pass it through to another. Okay. So, right there and there. Does it other specific features for rollback? Uh, some specific um, random functions for rollback? Because that's the same. Um, so hang on. The easiest way to do it so I don't keep getting confused. Back. Like constraints.
Name game state means that everything about your game and its management system must be the same players. What? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, you can't run any creation. Yep. 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 Random numbers. Random image is managed between players, so it's completely safe to use random functions, random choose for game logic. But and how do you how are you not just gonna get the same results every time? can change the seed before that point, which will not have any effect past the starting point. But it demonstrably did. Like, we saw they were just ending up in different places. And to be fair, this is only just seems, so it seems like it's just started happening, but it would make sense I just didn't notice it before. I'm going to try and put it back. Maybe this is caused by something else that we don't understand. We do it here. Rollback start happens. How long did it take to get this point? Um, I mean, I've been streaming for three and a half hours, but like I also streamed like an hour early to Twitch, so I guess like two and a half hours ish, something like that. Yeah, because look, they're different. They're just immediately different. Is when I create the game. Um, so just before rollback start is called. Cool. Yeah, maybe you're right. set to be read only. Already? That's weird. They actually look synced. I, I, I struggle to believe moving it there has made it work, but... Or is it just doing the same thing every time? It's not actually randomizing. Yeah, the VOD will be saved. Don't worry, Wade. I, I don't know if it'll be public or unlisted or how I'm going to do it, but...
Yeah, it's doing it's the same position every time now, so what? This is like the... Oh. Yeah, good point. Good point. Well spotted. Yeah, and so what I would now expect is for it to be no longer synced, right? Fortunately. Yeah, different. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get where where you can randomize the seed. Seems to be trying to explain it in the constraints bit, but I, I'm not really following. The rollback system will ensure that each player gets the same random number at the same point in the game. That sounds like it's just failing then. Oh, oh no, that's maybe that's right. It's the problem. Maybe everything's actually fine. The problem is I'm doing this here. What I need to do is only do that. Right, no, I, yeah, I think I get it. I think I get it now. So we can actually put this back here like we had, and we just need to do this like in rollback start, right? Um, or mm, we need that value. Um, It's like a weird space of time that doesn't quite exist. Because uh, by this point it's sort of too late because I think the objects have gotten made. I'm not really sure when these get made. Is it literally as we define them? I don't think so. No, they get created when the thing started, right? I be able to put it just after. Hmm. If we call it here, we get the, the random three six. So that's there then. We just like. I don't know if that happens before. I guess we'll find out. If it, it because it might just work from there. But I I feel like rollback star is going to happen after. Making the instances. But we might get away with it. I don't know how they've set it up. Yeah. Then it's create event. I mean, I, I, I know I could just do like wait a frame and then do it, but. Seems dumb. Yeah, I guess what we could do is be like visible equal pulse. And there's, I, I, it's just to be safe, but I, I, it might actually be, a, I might not have needed to do the visible thing, because it might just be other. This isn't really an important part of the game, but it's useful, I think, as part of the stream to work out some of these issues that people are going to be running into with this, right? So hopefully this is, like, informative or helpful or whatever as we try and kind of explore this stuff together. It seems bright. And then... Okay, and then these things have gotten made, and they've gotten made in the right uh, place. I've got two there. I need to make it so you can't leave the room as well. The camera can't leave the room and that kind of thing. 
Um, wait, hang on. Yeah, did that make enough? Uh, I interrupt it now. We don't know. We, we, we may never know. Okay. So I think that's the random number generation stuff sorted out. So, yeah. What we learned there is that you can randomize beforehand and it's going to be absolutely fine. Um, even though, like, in theory, every client is getting a different version of that because the rollback will take care of it and will synchronize randomization. Um, presumably to, like, the host of the game or something like that, or whatever the host's seed was or something. Um... But you can only actually call random stuff after rollback start. Because it's only going to actually start doing it after that point. So any if you do any randomization before that point, um, each player is going to see different results. Of that. Um, which is no bueno. That's very interesting though, in terms of like, so it randomized the like, like the positions got out of sync, right? But then, like, when we run the game logic on each each thing... Yes, yeah, so the rollback was ne is never updating the position of these things or anything like that. It's like saying, oh, that's wrong and it should be, like, over here because, like, the game state doesn't match. It literally just syncs, like, inputs. Alright? And it, of what we assume to be, like, an otherwise, like, synchronized game state. So everyone's kind of running their own version of the game. We basically just synchronize the inputs. Um, and then we roll back the state of a game and then do those inputs, like, again, if we got, like, something wrong. So all the prediction is doing is predicting input. I don't even know how you do that. Like, how do you predict what the heck the player is going to press next? And then be like, I don't, I don't really get how rollback works. I don't get what it's predicting. When it's trying to predict what's going to happen in the future or whatever. So far, I'm pretty impressed with this overall. Um, it's cool that it, like it largely does just sort of just work, but there are just like a lot of just yeah, and questions and things that you have to understand that are not clear, even with some like you know when you have a lot of like experience and stuff with Game Maker, um, the things that like work just you know just a little bit differently from how it normally works and stuff like that. Like yeah, you can follow that tutorial and have like those things like kind of up and going in a few uh in a few minutes but like the more you dive into it, even just like a little bit more complexity it does like like things do come up randomness has definitely been a thing and so on it's good that they have that that page there like um but like like this is like essential reading i think i haven't even read all of it but i think like interesting Arms are safe. There's a lot of things here, you know, like... The destroy event of an instance normally runs as soon as it's destroyed. For example, after instance destroy is called, however, the event may not run immediately in a multiplayer game. Instance destroy call can be easily can easily be run by a wrong prediction, which means that <laughs> wow, which means that the destruction of the instance will soon be rolled back when the correct data from the responsible player is received. Due to this, the destroy event of an instance is only called when it is confirmed that it was supposed to be destroyed. This means there might be a slight lag in the instance being destroyed on a player's screen, and its destroy event being called. You know, I'm not actually sure what that trend... That's... I'm getting tired, it's getting later on a Friday, so maybe it's just my stupid brain, but I'm, I'm struggling to fully translate what that actually means in reality. So in my head, all I'm kind of 
I'm kind of just writing down somewhere in the corner of my brain someone is writing on a notepad. Destroy events might be a bit weird or laggy. Um, that's that's kind of my takeaway. Not actually, yeah. That sentence. Yeah, the, the the full consequences of that sentence are not immediately apparent to me. Um, but I'm not going to think too hard about it. You cannot change the state in a draw event. And its purpose must remain to only draw graphics based on the state set in previous events. All managed objects become read-only during a draw event. That's very interesting. I mean, I suppose that prevents it. So it just stops you screwing anything up. Um, but that's very interesting. I mean, I know you're always told that you shouldn't do any logic and state changes during draw events, but I do that all the damn time, because it's just really convenient. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's, it's good to know. How late do I stay up most nights? These days, I'm a lot better at that. Um, and usually, like, the latest I will go to bed is, like, 1am. Um, and I, I consider that kind of a bad day, you know, <laughs> I, I usually, usually anywhere between 11 and 12. Um, which is very, very different these last four months to most of my life, which has been 3 to 4 a.m. Okay, so I'm sure there's probably other important things. Event order, start. Ah, oh, this answered that question for me actually when I was wondering, like, do they get made before or after this? There we go. Changing rooms sounds like a disaster, so we'll try not to do that if we can avoid it. <laughs> All right. So, I don't know, what, what else does this game need? Or maybe we can have so we'll actually be able to play it. When, you get, when the players get over these things, they need to like... Well, first of all, the player needs... The, the, the monster needs to be able to do something to the player. So what should the monster do? Let's design the game together, then it's not my fault when it sucks. What should like... Like, is it just a matter of they touch you and you die? I feel like it would be kind of boring, but like, what? Uh, actually, I don't know, maybe that's perfect. Um, and then we, we can have the player go into a kind of spectator mode or something where they can like see the see everything. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to make like a dead state. And this, this movement stuff is the same every time, so I don't really, like, I should really, like, function, um... Uh, actually, yeah. Actually, no. Yeah, yeah. I do I do kind of want to do that as well. Other monster can't see quite as well as everyone else, but I'm not I'm not 100% how I want to do that yet. I did think of this, I was like, I wonder if this browser thing could support my lighting engine, but I was like, it's 
too too much to think about right now. Um, like I don't know how the browser thing copes with shaders and stuff. Collision um, with O player with other dot. How do we know if they're the monster again? Round. Easier actually rather than having an event for that. Wait. Oh, yeah, we can literally call it in here, right? If place meeting x, y, um, try D. It's up here. Could make them circles actually, and then we can just use the distance thing. These circles, that might be better. Oops. Oops. If I go, all right. Nerv nervousness. That doesn't really work. Uh, but we might we could maybe go a bit and go a bit pale. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Actually, no, I think I preferred it with the outline. Uh, weirdly enough. Eyes are off center. Good, it's going to be creepy. <laughs> um, yeah, so when the player which is monster and we die and become a ghost um, exile can equal whatever our max speed is maybe we increase that
music's gotten appropriate. Do I know something about might like, cause a memory leak over time in a game? Yeah, so I mean like uh, all kinds of different things, right? Um, like if you made like a data structure and then like didn't destroy that data structure or made a surface and then didn't destroy that surface like when and made a new one of that object or you destroyed that object and made another one of that instance or whatever when you make more instances of things that have volatile data things like surfaces uh, ds structures and things like that um if you don't clean up after them and get rid of those things those things just hang around in memory forever and even if like the variables get cleaned up by the garbage collector i don't think the garbage collector is capable of cleaning up things like surfaces and whatnot so that's um the sort of thing that will cause a memory leak um Yeah, it is coming to other platforms. It does only work on the GX Target for now. Sorry, I missed all this Twitch chat. Um, it, do, it does only work on GX Target for now. They are bringing it to other platforms. I don't really know what that means in terms of like the server management side of it, whether that's all the same as well. Because, um, I mean, that would still be cool for Windows games and things. I just, like, I don't... Yeah, I, I'd struggle seeing anyone making, like, a console game wanting to, like, tie all their netcode to, like, servers that they don't manage or, like are not responsible for in any way um but I, I don't i don't know i have a lot of questions and there aren't many answers right now um so we'll see i'm excited to see how it goes i have heard of nuclear throne it's very good i think i still have a bunch of cards with like codes for nuclear throne from when i was community manager at yo, -Yo. um I, I would give a bunch of them out as various like twitter giveaways and stuff but I don't think I ever got through all of them because they gave me like a billion. How did I understand some problems with DS structures in this version of the multiplayer? Um, I've not really run into any yet. So, right, we'll become this ghost, uh, we need like a sprite for that, I guess. We like make it no longer a... what we'll do hang on so it's gonna be good hope you're all ready for this this is gonna be sick hang on uh 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 and then do the thing guys Didn't really work how I wanted. No, it's so hard to undo when you do that. Maybe I need more frames? Remain too quickly.
There we go. Um, and then where's the one where we lose the blue list for a frame? I think. Oh, yeah. Um, player, when we turn into a ghost, so we want to select sprite index to equal as ghost, image speed equal one, um, image alpha maybe to like 0.8. I think that's kind of everything for that. Give this a go. We torch this, yeah. We become a, we just become a ghost. A little sound effect or whatever. That is probably a good idea, right? because of the camera and everything. I don't want these one pixel outlines anymore. What I'm gonna do Probably just sort of add for the effect. Then we go, ooh, and they change that face a little bit. Oh, we might run. Oh no! As I say, we might end up running into the thing about instance destroy, but I think we will the way I'm going to do it. Yeah, we might. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder how this will work. Because I, I want to say, like, oh, when we collide and we do all that stuff, create a bunch of things that might create some weird 
rollback things that happen there. I was like, do we do we even need these to be managed? Because they just sort of appear and do their thing. I was just gonna make some like random like O fragments that are gonna like explode as you like you kill the you you, you kill a player. Um, direction random three sixteen. Uh, actually, no. What do that under like speed equals like random range like four six. Um, friction equals not point not five. See how that gets on. Maybe, maybe, maybe like one, one point one. If speed less than do. zero by not one. Image alpha equals zero instance destroy because these are just visual effects and they don't actually affect game logic. So I'm thinking they don't have to be managed. So I guess we're going to find out. Um, yeah, yeah, I was yeah I was immediately thinking that when I was like um, changing the direction there, but I can I can solve that out myself. Um, so instead, when this happens. Goes this lake. Um, repeat my number seven or oh, I random range. Five to seven instance creates layer, and we'll have like we'll, we'll raise the layer like I'll make a frag. So actually, we'll put it underneath. Create layer uh, x y. With that, direction equals angle, angle plus equals Give us like an evenish amount of them. We like plus random range. It's 10, 10. Uh, count over 360 is nice. Wait, no? No, no, I was right. Oh, five two seven. <laughs> Dumb. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Just wondering if it does this and then rolls it back and says, "Oh, actually, that shouldn't happen." We're gonna see like randomly sometimes fragments appear and stuff. Uh, well, well, no, cause I don't know. I don't know how it all works. <laughs> what have I forgotten? Hmm. 
I mean, you could just chase someone right at the start of the world and everything, but... Ooh. <sighs> nice, okay. Oh, the ghost actually kind of needs an outline now, which is annoying because we've done this animation that kind of prevents it. So I think actually what I'm going to do, as cool as that was to animate all that stuff, I'm going to simplify this a bit. Why don't we like just jump in direction again? Oh, we just have to. Um, I land um, in a number. Stupid round timer. We did that way too early. I like the idea that we you see each other and you don't know who it is at the start, but I might need to remove movement control from you at the start, otherwise you could you plan for it. But well, I suppose it's a risk, right? You run right on top of another person, then they're the monster, not you. Like, but I don't know. Still got a grief to game with it. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Uh, I mean, like, the basic stuff very, very quickly, you know, like, I did incredibly quick. We're basically just the game making part now, right? So I guess it's, but we've been like, every now and again running into weird little, like, how does this work with it sort of issues. I'll do a video kind of summarizing it at some point where I'm like just sort of give my thoughts or whatever on this whole experience. Um, so, we got the player of the monster, you can touch them and blow things up. Yeah, I guess it's in no one's interest to actually like group up on anyone. Because you could just easily, like, that could just backfire on you just so immediately, right? So maybe I just leave it like that for now. Um, the other thing I'm going to do... Hang on, let's think about this. We six forty three sixty. It's that big. And I'm gonna take this. Yeah, so I'm gonna do like draw some like numbers. Let's just draw like a zero. Just wanted to get the size kind of right. I 
kind of decided on an aesthetic now. Why would I copy? There's no need to do that. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Also looks terrible, but it's okay. Point is, we're gonna be consistent. You know what I've told you guys about being consistent. What we're doing right now. Consistently terrible. Yeah, it is. I think the playlist is linked in the description, actually, if I remember to do that. You would normally be able to get it from my overlay, but the overlay is not working today, so it is what it is. Oh, we're gonna do the zero, that's okay, we can just copy from the pen. I'm not sure I like that font in combination with this new style, so what I'm gonna do is instead of this, um, Oh, hang on, can we like reverse? Reverse frames, cool. That was easy. And let's count down. And then you just use count down for the sub image at um, the same position. And for this, I've been doing that for these as well, middle Sunday app. Yeah. yeah. Opens are always something I tend to forget about. Uh, that's an issue as well, because that's in the room. Those are probably all offset a little bit. Ah, that's fine. Get some like crystals or something, I think, for the things you have to activate. When we get to that point. There we go. Good. It's good. <laughs> Ooh. Monster to see left. Look, they added. Maybe we can use a, a filter layer for this. You know, they did that, right? Where it's like. I'm sure, they added vignette, right? Oh, uh, but it's on the room. Yeah, that doesn't really work the same. Edges, it's not really clear what. Okay, apparently that does that. Uh, what? Thanks for that weird. But anyway, um. Hey, Nakamu16, thanks for joining us. They have Stuart, yes. It's, uh, it's in beta at the moment. But it's like, uh. Like automatically managed multiplayer stuff. Obviously, you can still do everything manually. Like the the way you would do netcode before still exists. Do everything like manually and properly and handle it all yourself. 
um, like your own servers and that kind of thing, but this is kind of like a, a managed solution to allow people to kind of make and share stuff easily. Shift all these down a bit. Relative to screen, so it will scale with the screen. Because sure, when I put it in here, it looks like it just hits the room. Um, but either way, I don't really need to think about that. You can just do like a big sprite. Um, oh, I really don't know how, like, does the thing, does it cope with shaders at all? I know, although I, I, I don't really want to spend time, we, we want to just get going. Kind of take the game jam approach a bit and just sort of want to go, go kind of quick. Yeah, I don't think we can even really use this for it. Do I even want it to be a gradient though? Maybe I just odd circle around it? Shows it differently from in game, huh? Either way, I'm not gonna worry about it for now. Probably a lot more effective ways I could do what I'm trying to do here, but it's absolutely fine. There. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah, actually, no, I've got a different idea. Again, I'm getting a lot of different ideas, but we'll I'm gonna do is do this. Hard to center. Well, it doesn't actually matter now I think about it. Vaguely right. Wait a little bit. Edge. Do 
even do the brush thing. It's easy. I might even just be centered enough, honestly. And, uh, yeah, that's good enough. Uh, <laughs> Monster. Vision. I'm trying to do like a vignette around the player that's the monster. Um, reduce that kind of like vision range. Reverse, whatever. Let's equal. Series. Oh. Uh. Not left. Hello, everywhere. All the people who are from different places from Kazakhstan, from Russia, Michigan, Japan. Cool. VA for the game. I wish, but I don't think we're gonna get any audio in. I want to. I want to share something before I finish the stream. So we're gonna, we're trying to make something that's like vaguely playable. Have you guys played a little? Maybe we can find some sort of balance. I don't know. Is this even the right one? I don't actually know which tab it was actually running in. This might even be an old version. Option throw. Vision in managed object O round, which is read only. Managed object can't be trained. Ah, uh, the draw event issue. Okay. Change the draw step. So that's another thing. And about a little multiplayer gotcha. That's equal one. Actually, kind of makes sense anyway. It'll probably just be a maybe it's just actually a good habit forming thing. <laughs> Do that stuff in the draw step anyway. A bunch more of these open, I need to close. Well, that's cool.
You don't even see like it's, it's interesting because the camera keeps up with you, so you actually don't even see that far ahead of where you're going, which is a little bit annoying. So maybe there's some way we can. I don't know. Speed of it? Not have a max speed of it. I don't remember why we did. Let's just hope it doesn't matter. Close, close, close. I don't know what the background should be, whether it should just be like a grassy field or what. Uh, what are we talking oh, the camera, right? We're gonna make it like follow ahead of the monster a bit. Well, that should be would be pretty interesting. If uh, ID. Do we set that to when do we establish that? Like we'll go around probably. Yeah. But what we want to do is initially just set that to minus one. I don't know how I feel about this, but we'll we'll see how it plays out. That looked terrible. It's weird, like. I'm not to rapidly test things, it's like I feel like I want to test it in local rather than like like actual local rolling off GX, but then like I want to make yeah. You also don't want to do that. I'm just gonna set countdown to like like two. Going okay, yeah. That's quite it's kind of fun. Pretty impressive, this stuff overall. It's like, yeah, it's a bit weird because it instant changes the direction of the...
so it doesn't even seem to be quite correct. To be fair, I think actually just speeding the camera up is enough of an effect. It would be cool to put it ahead of the monster of it, but I don't really know how to work that out, so that's not really too much. Maybe another time we come back to that. It's good enough. Um... We can kill or like and kill the players. Uh, how do we make them like lose the game in that way? Get a straight to a something playable. Uh, yeah, I suppose O round handles that, right? Okay, this we're gonna need a bunch of like boot. Yes, uh, that's game over. Fine. I should be using my tablet for this. This is not some like Oh, I think I used a, a, an even bigger thing that I meant to, that's okay. We get player names as well, because I guess you've got to be logged into this thing, right? So do we know like the player's name and stuff from Opera GX? Yeah, we do. have any fonts at all that would actually fit this style? I'm not even sure we do. Sherry Liney is kind of similar? Do I even have that? Sherry Ray ones. Good enough.
Uh, so, step. If uh, all the players are dead somehow, right, how do we know that? Um, yes. When this happens, when the player dies... Create global hot dots equal zero. Play account minus one. Game in progress. Now I fixed the rollback lag. I, I haven't done anything to fix it. It's just like whatever you're seeing is just how it is ships out of the box. Like I haven't done anything to fix any lag. Um. Equal to um. When a um, global dot monster ID dot player name is that yeah do we get it in the object the name of the current player yeah apparently that should just exist. Um, game over monster wins. Maybe we'll have two different ones. Oh, actually, no, no. We'll do game over status to um, game over type equals one. I win if. Next, uh, C white, um, F normal, C white, F A center, F A uh, middle, I'm F A top. Draw text. Res W, res W half. Res height half, so we're just trying to draw this in the middle of the screen. Winners! A winner, even. Plus, um, that's winner, because it'll just be a string. Operation plus between type string and any mit, yep, that's fine. Should just be a string. Over. Um. Left. Yep. 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 Not. 
need some sort of like press the button to play again with all players, maybe, and then you can just carry on, or you can leave. I don't know. One cat. One of my helper scripts. Gonna... Maybe that's too ambitious because we need to like get everyone to have pressed it in this state. Oh, this is all in the step. I thought I thought I was in GUI for some reason. How do I handle the UI in my own project? Draw system or assets? Well, it depends on the project. It depends on what kind of UI stuff I even need. Um, but generally, I, I, I mean, I've, I've always kind of done it pretty manually. I've not really used any like third-party stuff for UI this far, uh, other than text boxes and stuff. I and, and text rendering side of it, I tend to use Juju's like um, scribble thing. I'm not sure how how would I re reset it. Don't know. Think about that. We, we can always get rid of that line if we just if we want to publish without that. Right. Oh. Expression. Okay. Come on, Sean. What are you doing? I, I did not disable channel points, I'm no longer a Twitch affiliate, which is what allows me to stream to YouTube simultaneously. Because I wanted to be able to stream to YouTube simultaneously. Um, so I no longer have things like subscription or um, channel points, unfortunately. But if you, if you bought a hat, you can keep the hat. Uh, sorry if you never made it. And ultimately, things like channel points, I could always just implement myself via like my stream overlay when when my stream overlay works, you know. Okay, um, this the font is a bit too big. It's okay. Pen. was pretty good actually. I mean 15 and we'll do like a stupid outline. Motion, draw, text, oh well, uh, x, y, spring, that color, c, black, Call and calls GPU get draw get for yeah okay draw text x y Proper speed coding at this point. <laughs> it's already half five. I kind of want it to be done by now. So, but I really would like to publish something. I'd like at least have some of you guys play it in the chat. 
Um, even if it's not much, you know. I certainly want to get Fireball up, and that would be real like at some point. But I'll do that on my own time rather than on streaming it. I think we've learned a lot, learned a lot about this today. I'll try and sort of wrap, see if we do the publishing side of it, and then kind of wrap it up. Um, so that's not. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't. I haven't thought about how to do that. So we'll try and do the win state for them, uh, some sort of win state for the players. I guess we're just actually going to do a timer rather than collect all the things. I don't know. Um, uh, it's a shame because like maybe we'll still try and do that. Let's let's see how we get on. More tech, draw sprite. Yeah, so we actually want to just yeah draw tech. Oh well, it's dead. Yeah, my, my game Fireball, I want to make that multiplayer via this. Um, I think it would work quite well. I'll share that. But that's more probably like a weekend job or something, right? Um, so... Okay, so that should be the, the game mode. We'll just test that very quickly. Not to test anything quickly. I mean, you get used to it, I guess. It's like, the thing, do the thing, grab the thing, pull it out. Watch that. Ah, I killed you. Winner, Sean JS. Looks okay, we just need to bring that down. There's no way to, like, GM live this, you know? It's kind of, like, tricky in that regard. No, about somewhere that's fine. Plus, like forty-eight. Might not even be enough. Actually, let's just be absolutely sure. Eighty. I uh, thank you for the reminder. Let me yeah, can we get this set up straight. I'll be expected to remember things like setting up straight. can actually be less than that. The little hearts as well. It's probably not the most appropriate one, but it like it's the closest thing that kinda works. That I have. Keep going to check like Brave Windows instead of um, Opera. So, the monster can win. Now we just need a way for the player to win, and then we have a game we can kind of share. Um, I would have liked, I want, I kind of want like collision and obstacles very quick. That seems like a bit much, but. Might be able to. Yeah, all right. Here's what I'm gonna do. Um, right, lightning fast. Red the mess wall. The opera mat. Oh, wall. Visible for now. Um, and we'll just do like a nice tile set over the top of it. I think that could work pretty easily. No, oh, way better idea. Way better idea. Hang on. What's the. make it again. Annoying it doesn't give you a 2x2 two by, two by default. Oh, here we are. Bigger than this. Let's make it like... Yeah, we have new fun tools we can use. 
for this kind of thing. It'll look a bit less terrible than Darker brown, more ready brown. Go with that. And what we do is just nine slice it. Probably. to do. Mask. Actually fine. Um, I, the long story short, uh, it's kind of hard to even give the long story short without maybe creating some misleading things, but I, I started by going through my GP in the NHS, which was actually deeply unhelpful. They would, like, didn't very take me all that seriously um, and tried to kind of fold me up onto some services that were probably not going to be very helpful for me so instead I decided to go private and see pay to see a psychiatrist um, which still took a little while but when we got there it was um, it's the way better solution um, no, I went through one that I like kind of like trusted um, did a whole lot of it. There's a long story, so it's yeah, it's kind of really hard to say. And I'm very privileged to have been able to go private. Not a lot of people can do that. Some people have better success with the NHS than others. It depends on your GP, but yeah. Um, okay. What, what was I just doing? Oh, yeah, we're making walls. It's a shame that the video the out, obviously the things overlap, but I think it looks kind of okay actually. Maybe there's some ways like players could get through the boss now because then they can hide that forever. Can't, they? can't do that. Places they can like appear. What is this level design? It's not really very good, is what it is.
that, but that does nothing. Um, it's more interesting. Um, it'll make a huge difference, but like. You know, I have to try and remember, you only have to touch the players, right? So I've got to be careful with this. Thinking about it like a Dead by Daylight and it's not. Good for a start. <laughs> I can't just reveal my secrets like that. Um, I like the idea of this actually as a shape as well. Like being down here, but yeah. You might be able to, the monster could come up here and see you through the wall, but like not be able to quite get to you. And be like, oh, they're around there. They're like, oh, you. The players probably have way too much vision, though. Like, we've restricted the monster's vision, and the players can just see them wherever the heck they are. <laughs> um, so, the, the thing as well, let's... This from... We'll keep the, the spawn the spot out of the pot, but it'll change anyway. Like, let's... Uh... Like just some sort of like floating gem. like a completed form. What should it do when it's like charging up or whatever? Just draw a percent over the top of it or something? I don't know. Might be easiest, yeah. And we'll just like have a color like it goes green. Ah. If this state round status is one, and uh, if uh, place meeting x y o thing actually better if we just uh, okay, let's go with what we were doing there.
Can't do logic in the draw step, right? So this might be interesting. Oh, I can't change state in the draw step. Still probably do some logic, right? Draw. Draw text OL. X, Y minus like 32. Um, times Next, good one. So we touch this and then, yeah. Close, copy share your row, open, paste. That doesn't do anything, but then this is gonna like. Oh, here yeah, we haven't even written collision. Only able to convert string to float. Sorry? Yeah. Um, I think that'll be. that'll work though. Collisions is the other thing. So, in the movement thing that affects everybody. Um. Well, not if place meaning x plus a plus b y plus b s b uh oh oh wow well, not place meaning uh is I remember my own collision code. This will be fun for everyone to meme on. X plus sign we just be Y O well, uh X plus equal sign A to B. No, everything's at like real positions as well, isn't this gonna be like this is gonna be a nightmare. Um I don't know, I don't know. should actually be fine, it just won't be super pixel perfect. That's okay. Think we are That's kind of bamboozle me, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Something like that. I can wait if it's screw up, maybe we'll try to compatibility with Might actually be worth it just generally.
There we go. Easy. Other than obviously the player will, the, the enemy will get stuck because it changes collision mask. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Uh, we could actually maybe just make the player, uh, we could just sort of cheat. And do that. Where the enemy just, monster just looks bigger and isn't actually. Make it more exciting. Although I imagine it'll just feel like total bull for the monster. You know, for a... Uh, what, what is this, like a five... Four hour game jam, essentially, what I've done here? I'm pretty happy with this. <laughs> I didn't want to do that, but it does look cool. I wish it didn't have the nice browser feature of actually remembering my... I, I close it because I want to close them. Oh, I did it again. I just can't help it. <laughs> Smash them. <laughs> refresh. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, because right, it's like... Well, I don't know. Cause, mm. So that's actually what that is, but maybe. First of all, find a gem. Okay, super fast the way it does it at the moment. That's okay. Um, every, do we want to do it every step you're touching it? Yeah, we'll just like, yeah. Now we know that those happen, so we want them to like activate however many to win the game. How many do we make again? Like player count plus one. So we need them to activate like four to win the game. So we want to like hover some like on the, the UI for everybody. Like here at the end, we want to do like draw a sprite. Uh, four bar i equals zero i less than um player count. One. Uh, plus one. Just play a count. I plus plus. If I less than global dot gen squared. No, oh, actually, we can just use that as the thing. Sprite draw, sprite, um, s s thing, sub image. Is that res w half minus half of that? Is this centered? It is. Um, actually, we'll... I hate trying to work out the centering of drawing a thing, a bunch of things. We'll just draw it in the top left, it's gonna be fine. Um, 10 plus i times 32, 10, uh, actually like, I'll be, yeah, 32, like 32, down, I 
x equals one. If image index does not equal one, global dot wins cleared plus plus around create global dot gems cleared equals zero. I think we're gonna have to make them go up even slower than you know, but like we'll, we'll, we'll see. Thing. Oh, gooey. Draws that. Yep, 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 yep. If at some point, uh, if global dot gems cleared greater than or equal to player count. Um, status equal to game over time. We're almost at the point where it's playable, guys. Over <laughs> time equals two players win. Um, winner equals. Actually, yeah, we never needed to. Yeah, that's fine. Um, winner equals players win. Uh, plus uh, n. Yeah. Uh, every player except the monster is a thing, right? So var players equal empty string with o player if id does not equal global dot. Monster ID players plus equal player name uh, plus That just works. I don't think we have to care about that actually. Ugh. Sorry, I've not really caught up with chat, but thank you everyone who's been stopping by keeping up with this this nonsense. Uh, if anyone is kind of new here, what we're trying to do is GameMaker has recently released some new multiplayer functions in its beta, um, and we're trying it out to try and make uh, a game as, as quickly as we kind of can and see how easy it actually is. I'm running out of just time in my day, so I'm trying to go really fast now and see if I can get... We, we've already given it a good try and like... We found loot, like, I've got a lot to say about it. I think it's actually quite cool, the tech. Um, there's a lot of little gotchas here and there that definitely require, like, reading the manual and stuff very thoroughly. And I think it can be very tricky for people with no experience at all. But, like, um, like you know, the whole makeup thing in 15 minutes is like, well, yeah, kind of. And you can kind of go from there. But, like, I don't know, there's a lot that can go wrong, you know? <laughs> and... <laughs> And we've been seeing some of that uh, today. We've made this take way too long in order to test it. Wait, oh no, that's oh yeah, we need we need two to win the game. That's what those are. We need something to make it more obvious that these are on the UI. I think. Transparent. Ah. Uh... You know, it's actually going to be faster to turn that up. Well, zeros. We're not going to be able to put in a nice thingy state, unfortunately, but like restart the game state. But hopefully I can like share it in some dumb way. I don't know how like how much 
I'm worried when I get to the opera thing, it's going to be like, oh, you have to like upload loads of stuff to share it. But even if that if that is the case and I can't do it in the stream, I'll find a way to do it afterwards, and we can just, I, I'll publish what we've made. Or something. Okay, so. Where are the gems? Oh, there's the other one. Mm, got one. Two. Game over. Winner. Players win. John JS. And then it would list whoever else won. Text is terrible. <laughs> that font is so bad, actually, but whatever. <laughs> maybe we'll, we'll maybe use a better font. What, what have we got? Maybe one of Sherry, uh, Chevy Ray's ones is good. That looks alright, actually. I'll go with that. Um, 24. Maybe size 12, though. So... Does this just kind of work? I mean, I'm going to change this background because I'm going to stick with it. I'm just going to go with like a nice, like, grassy green. Uh, I'm going to make another one of them that's like... That same green, but like... You shift and then like up value a little. That. Do this. Go into the room editor. Uh, asset layer. Oh no, it's too pixely. I've forgotten my own rule and style here. change the outline. Keep it consistently thick as well. I'm going to stretch these way out. Don't want to imply that there's more space in the level than there is. Okay. This look all right. I'm gonna nah. I don't, I don't like them. We're, we're gonna leave it without. Okay. I think it looks okay like this. Uh, okay. Depends in the corner looked a little misleading. Let's like change. Alpha, um, uh, if that is true, anything? Are we done? We might be done. Oh, I've lost my chat windows. Why are my chat windows gone? I pinned these. Why have they become unpinned? There we go. You can do it as an unlisted page. Oh, that's cool. 
uh, yeah, I'd, like I hope there's some way we can push out as easily. I we don't even have any kind of like loading screen or anything like that, you know. Uh, oops, so oh, I think we. Uh, I think we screwed up. Yeah, I'm sure there is something where I can like just refresh it or something as a way to do it, but. I hope you can't spawn in the wall, that would be bad. Hopefully not. And we know that works. Spawn in from under here. Yeah. Fresh? Fresh? Can you get can you like make a new I don't know, new room or whatever? I actually have control R uh, the R button, but I don't know if it works right. I doubt it. Yep. Yeah. It's done it the other way round. <laughs> That's okay though, we can invert that easily. Well, let's just make sure that it's spawning the right number of gems. Could be a third one. Yeah. So I can do the same thing. I is less than the number of gems cleared. Yes, yeah, no, that's right. That's gonna work, right? Um, you know, be safe. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. that works. We need to change the player thing down. So like. Before we finish the stream, I just want to kind of give it a go, you know, so like half six is about as late as I can possibly go. So like we, because I do actually have stuff to do tonight. Um, zero. We removed two zeros, right? And it was, it was still going up like that. So hmm, I think maybe it's going to be this value. We're just going to go with it and set the player count to be uh, four, and we're gonna try and give it a go. So how do we share it? Let's go all the way back to the video. How do we share it, Mataru? Is it Mataru or Mataru? I've never actually, <laughs> I can never remember. <gasps> Stores respawning, inviting friends. Save and confirm. Now no, open the publishing, publishing menu. menu. Okay, here we go. Now, now, how do how you, do you upload, upload this game, game and, and play it with, with your, your friends? friends. You want to that? Click <laughs> on create executable and then, and then log, log in through Opera. Opera. Once, Once you're done, done, log into Opera, okay? Your video is very good, by the way. Very, very helpful. Um, I already missed what you said. Log in through Opera. Opera. Wait, what? You Back, Back in Game Maker, Maker click oh, in Game Maker, executable, executable, and then, and then log, log in through Opera. Opera. What? Uh, yes. No wolf to you received. Oh my gosh. Oh, what's happening? Oh yeah, it will echo. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, I, I had my headphones on for that. Um, before. And so it's gonna, yeah, it'll, it'll double now. We, we just have to put up with that a little bit. I'll, I'll try and lower the volume when I come back. Please close. I should actually be listening. Right. Let's not echo everyone out. Um, Once you've done that, and the game is compiled and uploaded, click on Edit Game on Opera. This will open... Okay. Come on. 
dumb monster game. <laughs> Power up the gem before the monster gets you. Multiplayer! Four players. Yeah, we will probably want to make it unlisted though if we if we can. Um pushing. Either version what? Oh visible but oh okay. No. So we can do this. I should probably just be watching more of the video now. Like if, if this amount of it works, I'll be happy. Okay. Copy. Alright. Whoever gets in first, guys. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Continue. Is that how it works, Squaggies? You need Opera GX, obviously. So, you know, it's the most prepared, make it in. I did update the player count. Something will break, like, guaranteed. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's laggy. It's very laggy. But it seems to be working. Oh god, oh! Oh, it's a shame it's this laggy. I'm not really sure what the deal is there. Right, yeah, we will work together. Hang on. <laughs> oh, but oh, they've been gone. <laughs> it's, it's a shame it's so laggy because it's all it's still fun in spite of that. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Oh, they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. No, they know, they know! <laughs> like, when it moves less slowly, it's like, you've got way too much time to react, so it's probably like, it kind of screws the monster as well, but like, oh no 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 no! Yeah, uh, I should have had the names drawer of the people as well. I wonder why it's so, why the lag's so bad? It's a, it's a shame that our final test we made it like, because we don't know, we don't know if this is my fault. Changing region in account settings. Um, yeah, I am EU at the moment. Um, Alright, so a mo yeah, I don't know where everyone is. This is the problem though, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, it's running better now. Oh, now that Benjamin disconnected, it's running better. So I don't know, but yeah, maybe it's like cross regions and stuff. I don't know how we can like if if all of us pick one region, will that make I don't know. Uh it's just like a chase now, right? Yeah, there's, I don't think there's much you can do when you're just being chased by it when there's only one of you left. But grats, when I, I think that's interesting. I like uh well, that's obviously an issue. I presume it's something to do with the region stuff. I'll, I'll try and change it, and we'll try one more. But otherwise, I'm still I'm pretty chuffed. Like to just put it up there. Like, let's go to North America. I don't know. Uh, where did that even go? Where did my game go? Or whatever. I don't even. Um. Create game. Uh, what was? Oh, it's there. Publishing, I, I don't know. This page works, so we'll use this. Invite friends. Copy. Let's try again. Oops, I think that I think I screwed up that URL. Click the second one if you're on Twitch. Jump in again. Hopefully they don't lag it out too much this time. Probably, yeah, it probably is because of players in different regions. It's like, well, how do you, do you, is there a way to enforce, like, who can join it via region and that kind of thing? Like, I don't know how that actually works in this ecosystem and whatnot. Yeah, it's pretty laggy again, unfortunately. 
But it's sick that it just works, you know? Okay, I have no idea who that- ah, oh, we lost Benjamin. Oh, we lost everyone. Oh, I get you, everyone just DC'd. That's a sh uh, oh, and, and then it, like, crashed because, I don't know, it lost all the players. And, uh, <laughs> I gotta get it to work. That's a shame. Um, you were the monster, you got an error. I mean, I think it just, like, I think it kind of just lagged out, Eric. Um... Yeah, because it does, does it largely like peer to peer? It's interesting. I'm trying to think of a way. Is there any way we can guarantee some people are in the same region? Not really, because like I'm just putting the thing in chat and it's just whoever wants to join joins, right? Only people. Right. Well, yeah, we'll try that. Hang on. Do we have at least three people in like my Twitch chat who are EU? Um. Okay. Only, please only click this link, Twitch, if you have, um, if you're in the, yeah, it needs to be, you, you need the browser. If you don't have the, you need a browser and the account. Okay, we got Nick. Um, I'll try it in YouTube, but like, only click if you, we'll see if people like behave themselves. I'll just trust that they did. Probably would have been better to go with NA, I think that's actually most of my audience, but I'm not NA, so then I would be screwing it, right? Okay. Okay, it's better. It's a lot better. Is the monster stuck in the wall? No, 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 oh, no! <laughs> no. <laughs> Someone just got wrecked at the start, it's like AFK. <laughs> It's okay, if they chase after me forever. You can play as a guest? Nice. Oh, we got one, we got one, we got one, we got one. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, we need to like split up, I think. Uh, <laughs> oh no, I don't know if that was my other friend or not. I don't know. Oh, okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, try and whiz by them. Like, if I do runs like this, I can up, up it by like a percent of time. Oh. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, yeah, this is like the, the 1v1 scenario needs some balance work. For obvious reasons. <laughs> I wish I could see what's on their screen because they have like. Less vision, right? I'm gonna get like two more. This is gonna take forever. I might just let them win. Yeah, let's just. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna take too long. <laughs> but that was sick. Okay, so that's obviously like regions is like, you know, cross world play is like not super compatible. Um. I guess you can do your own things to kind of. So, so, I, I don't really know what it, what the solution is there. I guess like I don't know if it's sort of thing on GX Games is end where it'll only be published. To, I don't know. I don't know how you, how you how you resolve that. I guess a lot of it is because it's mostly like private invites or whatever, right? Anyway, so I guess you just control that by sharing it with your friends, and that's mostly what this like kind of this setup at least is for. I I wonder what the solution there for that kind of thing is long term because it's like i guess i don't know it's like it feels like maybe it's the stuff the the developer can do to like optimize the data flow because it's just kind of got to send like a this like whole game state thing oh my god 
Okay, hopefully that's being noise cancelled. Ice cream truck outside. Um, yeah, and you can still move around while this is happening. This is kind of cool, right? So that was sick. That was that was really fun. So I hope people enjoyed the stream today. Like uh, the vod will go live. I don't know if it'll go live right away. I'll have to check it see if it's got any of the YouTube can be weird and it keeps your preview stuff in sometimes. So I might have to edit that out before it goes live. Um, but otherwise, I'll try and put it like like out as soon as I can. Um, I'm also going to put out while I'm here one of the talks for um, GM Meetup because I've forgotten to make those live. <laughs> I've been meaning to stagger them out and then just like I put that video out announcing them and then I was like, oh yeah, I've got all that content to release. Um, so let's have a vote. Um, oh, I can't. My overlay isn't working. Um, but I can get a vague vote because I can just look at the chat. So press, which 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 one are we more interested in? So one in chat for Matthew Morris, cutting game production tri times by building a game logic simulation. Let's uh, talk about machinations, um, a, a cool piece of tech. Um, press 2 for Russell K's talk um, about uh, the Game Maker Roadmap. Press 3 for Juju Adams' uh, talk uh, about data and uh, live updating um, included files at runtime. Actually, really, really cool. Apparently, no one wants any of them. And if no one wants any of them, <laughs> Space Penguin 3. Two, two, we've seen some twos on YouTube. We've got some threes on Twitch. YouTube are out competing Twitch here. A lot of twos. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, that that seems pretty overwhelming to me. Sorry, I know poor Twitch chat haven't voted a whole. I'll, basically, all the Twitch chat wants three, but like, there's only like four of them versus like a million of y'all on YouTube that want want to. So I think Russell K's talk it's gonna be. So that is now live. Should have notified you all and all that good stuff. And it doesn't matter how many times one person types two quiz. That's cheating. Line you out. Make sure I didn't take too many two. No, yeah, well, there was still way more twos. All right, so that's out now. Um, I'll try and make the vod for this live as soon as I can. Um, I'll I also I'll do like a video where we just sort of talk about what what we did here today and how it went and what my thoughts are and stuff on it. But to summarize here, like I think this tech is really really cool. Um, like, like this. Like to be able to just share something with like even just with your friends, just as like a hobby thing, or to share things with your friends and stuff like that's just awesome, right? It does suck that it like requires like the this browser and ecosystem right now. I have so many questions about how it's going to come to other platforms, um, like what it, what it's going to mean, like what, what that means for the the server stuff that manages it, or how tight it is to that, like what I just I, I mean I have questions about how it even works now. Um, I just like there's so much but like i think it proved its point like this was essentially like i mean i don't know it's a simple game but like you know we've been streaming for five hours and 44 minutes an hour of that was just me dosing about with the twitch chat before we even got started so this was like just under five hours it took me to make this like multiplayer game um with like a total like like full like foolish game loop you know not really very balanced or anything like that but like as much as just enough for me to consider it a game that you can like you you can play and it has like win states and so on with two like asynchronous teams and so on uh, we got cameras moving around we and we we, we we sussed out just a lot we ran into so many of these like exceptions and tricky things right um uh the constraints page it's not gonna want to load now right yeah this page so I think currently, my advice for anyone who wants to learn this stuff at the moment um, is to first of all watch Matthew's um, video. Um, it's really good, but um, really just it really is just the getting started point. 
and for a really like making anything even slightly more complicated than like people just like on, on the screen shooting projectiles at one another, you're gonna want to read this page next. I think rollback constraints. I think you want to read all of this, and honestly, just you want to digest the entire section. Honestly, the, the, this whole section, like there's just so many important things that are in here that couldn't be covered in obviously like a quick, you know, 15 minutes make a game thing. Um, but once you get a grip on all this stuff, and once it, you do get it going, as I say, I hit a point kind of rapidly where I was like, and that's kind of all I need, right? And now I just sort of go from here. Um, and you, you, once you kind of just know the basic rules of it, yeah, you can, you can kind of do a lot. Like very, very quickly, which is very, very exciting. Um, I'm so excited to see this come to like other platforms. I just, I have a million, I just have so many questions though still just about how it's going to work on all platforms and all that kind of thing um it it seems a little bit laggy even with the like the the regional stuff seems kind of laggy and it's gonna like it's tricky to know like what can the developer do about some of those things because it might be that we can optimize i don't know the the, the data where we're sending and stuff like that and you know what's being managed and what isn't and all those kind of things i think the key to it i'm guessing my, I suspect the key was, is like trying to find ways to have as many unmanaged objects as possible, right? <laughs> um, but like anything that like, anything that affects your game logic has to be managed and stuff. And yeah, I don't know. It's it's tricky. Um, there's there's a lot of bloat into getting it to be so general, and that's like what causes I, I think is probably what's responsible for a lot of lag. And it's like a really tough like how do you get around that while keeping it nice and easy to use. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. This is like just the very first public release of this that anyone's been able to like play around with, right? It's like, you, you can only go up to four players at the moment. Like it's just like really early. There's like only like 12 functions or whatever. Um, and I like a couple of events. So I'm, I'm really interested to see like how this develops and carries on. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Like I said, there's a new video, a new talk out on from GM Meetup on my channel now. Um, you can go check that out. The VODs will go up when I can. And, uh, oh yeah, and if you are if you happen for whatever reason to be in Brighton or can get to Brighton next Tuesday, I want to say, uh, yeah, um, the GM Meetup will be happening again and I'll be there and so will your team. You can come ask them all the questions that I'm going to ask them and then get, get some answers maybe. Um, so that's going on. Um, other than that, Look forward to more of these talks coming out um, next week. And uh, I'll see you all when I see you all. Cheers, guys. Thank you all so much for watching, both on Twitch and on YouTube. And uh, yeah, that's me. I'm done. Thanks, guys. I'll catch you all next time. It ends.